Falls Australia acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which this stream is produced. We pay our respects to all First Nations people and acknowledge Elders past and present. The sectional rounds are done. It is quarterfinal time at Women's Triples Action at the 2023 World Bowls Championships. It's Australia, Dawn Heyman, Lindsay Clark and Kelsey Cottrell up against South Africa, T Tabelo Muvango, Esme Kruger and Annika Snyman. This is promising to be a wonderful contest. Val Febo here with you at Club Helens Vale and joining me, Barry, the great man, Lester. Good morning, Val. Uh, let's get the football out of the way. Well done, Collingwood. Too good. No more talk of AFL after that. But, yeah, really looking forward to this match. The reason I'm looking forward to this is, what are we doing? Something quite different this morning, Val. East West. Yes, and they have started. So we How are good is that? Underway. We're getting started as quick as possible this morning. It is untimed, so we don't have to start at a particular time. Trial ends are all done. Yeah, east-west direction. So to our viewers that have been tuning in all week or sort of 10 days now, it's uh, about around that mark, isn't it? It's, uh, we're playing in that east-west direction here on this top green, something you wouldn't have seen much of. And the player's already finding the line. Look at that, three bowls so far, as good as it gets in terms of line. And that bowl just falling short. But Five Commonwealth medals or medalists out there. This morning, Barry Lester, Lindsay and Kelsey, of course. We have we know their exploits, but Tabello took home silver in the women's fours last year and Birmingham losing to India in what is now becoming one of the more famous victories for the Indian contingent, plus uh, Esme Kruger and Annika Snyman winning silver in the fours in 2018 and 2022. Australia, of course, the victors in 2018 on the Gold Coast right here. So the back two for South Africa have an abundance of experience. Australia in red, South Africa in blue, Sabello using XGs and Esme and Annika using Era Optima, Dawn Heyman using Henselite, Lindsay Clark uh, is Taylor and Kelsey Cottrell, Drake's Pride Conquest. Yeah, lovely shot from Esme. Ezra, Esme sorry, I've uh, got to know Esme really well over the years. Very, very well credentialed and uh, elite international player for South Africa. And this little uh, rivalry we speak about, Val, there's been a lot of games, Australia versus South Africa, in big matches across this event. It's great to see it continue. And we uh, we say hello. Uh, what is it? Good good evening? Good evening to yep. good our evening. friends in South Africa? Be very late at night, or not too late, but late enough. I think they're about eight or nine hours behind. So it might be midnight there in South Africa at the moment. Yeah, so good morning to you, or uh, evening to you all. And please, can you give it a share? Give it a share to all your friends. And if you're uh, putting it on your Facebook page. 12.30 a.m. in South Africa at the moment, Baz. So. Well, you can still share it, but they might not see it till they wake up. <laughs> uh, people, some people are night owls. Who knows? Great shot from Lindsay Clark with her opener. So, of course, there's no time limit here. We played 18 ends. And, of course, now being in the post-sectional rounds, Barry, if it is mathematically impossible for one team to win, those ends will not be played. We don't have to play up to the full allotment of 18 because shots up, they don't matter. That's correct. So there's really a lot of freedom there. No time limits. And uh, all the players can... Yeah, probably you probably see a bit more shots play in this particular... Uh, moment of the tournament because there's not much that they have to worry about on other rinks, other results. So it's just a matter of getting the job done. As we see on the sidelines, Aussies, well, there'd be probably a dozen, probably close to 20 supporters in, in the green and gold cheering on Australia. The players no longer competing, plus all the support crew. And down on green one, we have the Australian... Men's fours team. Yeah, men's fours going for it. And a bit of an easterly breeze coming across this morning. But this match promising to be an absolute cracker. And Australia, they were first in Section 1. We covered them yesterday against Israel. They looked pretty dominant, winning by over 20 shots over that Israeli trio. And they were undefeated, six wins and zero losses. South Africa, four wins, one loss, second in Section 4. So... 
Australia will be absolutely desperate to get on the board early. They're holding one currently. As Kelsey Cottrell looks to come around the back. And Baz, of course, this... I don't want to rain on the parade or party of anybody, but if they don't win Australia, Lindsay Clark's international career will be over. This could be her last match. We don't know, obviously. They've got to keep winning to prolong it. Yeah, ideally, you know, especially being a club that Lindsay's played so many years at, currently down at Club Tweed, but Lindsay would have played here as a member for well over a decade and so many great memories on these greens here at Club Helensvale, seeing the evolution of the club, the facilities and the players that have come and gone. And the thing about Lindsay is she can play all the shots in the book. She can play front end, back end, and her resume speaks for itself. And she'll be looking to do a bit of that today as Australia get on the board. One to start for the Aussies. So, good start for Australia. A nice little settler there from Lindsay. And like their tactics yesterday, Dawn Heyman has put that jack right up Barry Lester. Oh, sorry, the mat right up. Yeah, spot on, Val. Good observation. Uh, that's we, something we saw yesterday in the in the triples game in that middle session. So it's something they're going to continue to do. They were very good at it against Israel. And they're... Are we going to get a measure here or... Maybe. <coughs> we're going to have a quick look. The umpire is coming out. The tape measure is here. So we had this a couple of times yesterday with Australia and Israel because of the sheer place placing of the mat and where the jack ends up. You've got to be you've got to have a deft touch to ensure that you get the right length. It is too short, so South Africa will regain control of the mat. So the intent shown by Australia doesn't work out this time. But Tabelo Muvango will stride up to the mat. And, well, she takes it right back. Clear intent from the Australians. South Africa will be aware of that. Great to have your company from wherever you're watching from around the world. Quarterfinal action here in the women's pairs. The other stream from a women's triple, sorry, women's pairs quarterfinal on the other stream. Gold Coast Tweed District doing that one for us right here on Bowls Australia's Facebook page, England versus Wales. And that's from Musgrave Hill. Yeah, so many venues, five venues in the, to be exact, still very active as we creep closer and closer towards the finals. Dawn Heyman on the forehand. So South Africa said, Dawny. We aren't really keen on playing the same length you tried to play. We're going to roll the jack 33 metres. So it's a long end here. Dawny's done the important job first up. Got that first ball past the jack, as you see there. That's a really, really good starter. So as much as we want to come out nailing the jack and playing perfect bowls early on, it's a it's a great way to really find your your weight and your and your line to the jack when you've got that first one beyond you've experienced what it takes to get right to the back and what it takes to play the right line and I'm expecting a fairly decent correction from Dorney here as we see beautiful line again just under the weight but one of the key components to this match and to playing good bowls has been achieved for Dawn forehand her line is now sorted so important. We saw that with Chrissy yesterday, just finding that line immediately. And Baz, what one thing I want to ask you is now, even though South Africa didn't get to keep, or Australia didn't get to keep the mat, what is South Africa thinking now? Because that's obviously a little seed planted in their head that they know what Australia's intent is going to be. We saw it yesterday. They might have seen it. We don't know. But what are they thinking right now? Are they thinking ahead to 
you know, what Australia are going to do. Yeah, well, there could have been. You never know. South Africa could have sat around the dinner table last night watching the live stream uh, once they knew they were playing Australia this morning, watching Australia's live stream game against Israel yesterday. Just said, why not? Let's all sit around and watch that game. Take some learnings and, um, you know, just learn what you can. And, um, yeah, what what particular lengths did they play? Um, what did they seem to play most of? Front-end bowls on the lead, etc. So South Africa... May have done that, and I think with the ability to do it, it, it would come in handy. Uh, and they've both shown their cards too. So South Africa's clearly shown to Australia that they're not interested in short ends. They're going to go long. It's something they're more comfortable with. And but it's something that Kelsey Cottrell is very comfortable with, and I'm sure they'd be mindful of that as well. Yeah, and, the, and the, I guess the thing the Australian players and, and the Australian teams would pride themselves on, especially having the home ground advantage, is if these are their conditions and these are the pace greens they play a lot on, is that they're going to be comfortable on all lengths. But ideally, um, those short lengths are something they look to, to favour as Lindsay tries to turn Dorney's front one up. Well, she's opened the head up a bit. So South Africa's bowl now is a little bit vulnerable. But we'll see Esme here on the back end just to try and work under that front bowl on the shoulder there, even potentially trail the jack. And this is a, a perfect example of um, you can be a little bit aggressive on these type of shots. If you underplay them, you, what you're doing is you're just going to make it harder for your own skip. So Esme, she might be far away. Very, very good player. Certainly is. Two-time Commonwealth Games silver medalist. Now the draw, Barry Lester. That is what we're looking at at the moment. And Australia and South Africa sit on top of the draw here. In the quarterfinals, they will meet the winner. The winner of this will meet the winner of England and Ireland. So Marshall Cooler and Rednell against McIntyre, O'Neill and Wilson. And then uh, on the bottom half of the draw, we also have on this green, New Zealand's Polson, Bruce and Smith against Aliani Jamil, Haidar Rahman and Arshad of Malaysia. And then after that, well, India against Canada. So Chowdhury, Pinky and Rani Turki. And then against Cooper, Van Stein and Boyd of Canada. Kelsey Cottrell, backhand. Jack down the line would be the best result. She's not far away, is Kelsey Cottrell. That's she, perfect. She halved it a little bit. Well, it was perfect until she fell over because it was still a hole. So when she was staying up, there was a hole between the bowl and the jack. But now, and we talk about, well, I spoke about how important Dawn Heyman's first bowl was. And it's now arguably the best bowl on the green. Right there at the bottom of the screen. That now will really start to dictate how South Africa approach this head. Very quick on the mat there, Annika Snyman. And Barry Lester, you called it perfectly. Sensational delivery from Snyman. Wow, what a great shot. That was perfect weight. Any quicker, Jack down the line would have been a couple down. But Kelsey now has all the confidence in the world to play this shot because of that back bowl of Dawn Heyman's and leads. When you're up, you're in the game. As you mentioned it, literally after the first bowl of this end. And Dawn Heyman's bowl has well and truly come into play now. If Kelsey can execute this perfectly... Let's see where she goes. Well, Val, if you remove Dawn Heyman's bowl from the head, let's say it was in the ditch, Kelsey right now is thinking, what can I possibly do? But now she's got a great shot on. Backhand with weight, turn the shot bowl off, kick, kick it through onto the jack. Just going to miss on a high line. So Annika Snyman, there's a lot of danger in this shot here. She doesn't want to touch too much because if she touches her bowl... It could go onto the jack and spill it out towards the Australians. And, well, they're not bowling it. Yeah, soak up an end. Um, yeah, it's probably a little bit too early. To uh, All the players are still feeling their way out in the rink. So that players only get the two ends to roll up. Obviously, a couple of bowls each. Um, I, 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 Val, I don't know you've heard me say this. I personally would love to see to the point one day we can get more time to, to warm up before games. Uh, maybe a half an hour or half a dozen ends, um, especially at this level. But... When the players only get the couple of ends, um, forward deliveries to find exactly what every part of the green's doing in terms of turn, forehand, backhand, length. Um, the players got to make the most of that roll up. And then we saw there from South African skip, 
Just not enough confidence yet. But later in the game, there's no doubt she would have tried to draw another one. But just not enough confidence yet in the conditions and the green just to be able to play a touch bowl to draw another. Interesting start. Australia's men's fours. They're taking on the USA in the quarterfinals of on rink one. Or sorry, green one here at Club Helens Vale. We'll bring you updates throughout the morning and let you know how they're going as they look to get through to a semi-final and get a medal. Of course, if you win your quarterfinal, you're guaranteed a medal, Barry Lester. Two bronze medals awarded. Yeah, you're testing my memory out. In 2016, we definitely played America in the men's fours uh, finals somewhere. It was either the semi or the quarter. Uh, I'm sorry, Val, I can't help you out. But Australia, I remember when the draw came out, it was Scotland, New Zealand, Australia and America. We drew America, Scotland were defeated by New Zealand uh, in 2016, so that does help me. So, yeah. So, America, yeah, they've done it again. Back-to-back World Championship men's fours, reaching the finals right under the USA. And um, a few members of the team are still there today, so it's great to see. And it's hard for me to talk about USA uh, when it comes to lawn bowls because it's uh, one of the places I haven't been to yet, and I'm really, really itching to get there. I, uh, I've seen and... Great photos and a bit of footage from events over there in the USA and looks like a really good place to go and check out and play a bit of bowls. Have you boys you boys been to America? I have. Went in 2011. Um, went to LA, New York and Washington. It's good fun. New York is Great bowl. certainly a magical place and it's one that I definitely want to get back to. So and we'll keep you updated there. Yeah, what do you think, Val? You get get back over there for think, a white yeah, Christmas or something? Yeah, maybe. I think that's that's one of the plans I'd love to take. Um, love to get up there for the honeymoon, actually. And New York, it, it, it is just a wonderful city. There's always something happening. It's a lot of a gets a lot of a bad rap at times, but it is genuinely an awesome place. As as my that one's on the way backhand. Oh no, it's finished. Uh, so that's uh, one to Australia currently. Well, probably two. Yeah, it's one of those angles. I'm probably tipping that's going to be a measure at this stage. But what I like about that head is, once again, Dawn over that distance, 33 metres, 34 metres, two bowls inside two feet early on in this match. And that's just showing that she's she's in rhythm. And we'll see Esme here lay a bit more weight. So looking, looking to slide under that wing bowl, sit the shot. We do apologise if they do stand on the centre line. I'd did go and ask, so it's obviously there is a world, there are much more important things at stake, so it's something that we're just going to have to bear, I think. Good on you, Patrick. Yeah, we'll have to take you up on that for sure, mate. I've seen a famous photo as Esme turns that bowl up. Well, it's made the head harder, but she she would have achieved second out of that. I'm, Definitely. Yeah, uh, New York. I've seen that famous photo of um, of. Um, Wolverine, what's his name? Strain actor. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, delivering a bowl in Central Park. Have yeah. You, and have you seen that photo, Val? I have, in the Central Park Bowling Club. What a picturesque location it is. Lindsay Clark, around the front. What an effort. Not a bad effort at all. Probably <laughs> hasn't slid in for second shot, but good idea and a high five from Kelsey Cottrell. Uh, great to have everyone's company. Mark Baker saying BPL 19 in Vegas. Well, wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> Sign me up now. Baz is very happy. So, Imagine getting Clive Adams up to Las Vegas for a BPL. We'd never see him. Be at the casino the whole time. South Africa. One down. Backhand it is with weight. Probably looking to play a couple of feet. It's really hard to get your exact weight control over these distances. Probably just under weight for me with that one, but if the jack was on the end of it, probably would have made one or two. Yeah, we might have to take you up on that, Patrick Duffy. Just to go and hang around New York, but no, nah, it's, uh, it's a great part of the world. Depends what you're into. If you're in that into that city lifestyle, which I love, being from Melbourne and being in and amongst it. 
It's great. So Kelsey Cottrell looking to interrupt. Doesn't want to promote this too much. Now, what has she done here? Can't pick it from here, Val. Nah, and we've got a really good view. Our eye line is right towards that head. Both might even be touching here. So one left for Annika Snyman and Kelsey Cottrell. Could we be in for our first tied end? Yeah, we haven't seen one yet. No. no. Uh, yeah. It's very rare. That's right. But they do happen. We saw it at a BPL recently. Has happened before. Time for Annika Snyman to try and get rid of this Kelsey Cottrell bowl if she can. The back of the rink and the tee, well and truly covered by South Africa. Annika Snyman. That's definitely disturbed it. It has. But what are the Aussies going to do? Wonder Kelsey with a wry smile on her face. Lindsay reckons it's one. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, they're, well, second time in a row that we're <laughs> going to see that. Kelsey's not bowling it, and I don't blame her. So we continue to go up in singles. 2-1 Australia lead. And now Dawn Heyman picks up the mat, takes it up the green. As Kelsey bowls her bowl back to the mat end. And this will be more than enough in terms of distance. So the short end, we finally get to see it from an Australian point of view. South Africa have controlled the length in the first three ends. Other quarterfinals. Can't quite see. Oh, India trail Canada, 3-1. Malaysia lead New Zealand 4-0. And England against Ireland. England 5 Ireland are something. There is an ITO sitting in the way, so I think it's a one maybe. So that's what's happening around green three here at Club Helens Vale in the northwest of the Gold Coast or northwest of Surfers Paradise anyway. Great weekend of sport coming up. NRL finals, AFL finals, the World Bowls Championships finals. The US Open final as well in tennis. Uh, what's it up to, Val? You're across the tennis, mate. Where are we at? Uh, we're that, at the mate? semifinals. So women's semifinals taking place. <laughs> Can't believe, of course, the timing of the World Bowls Championships is right when the US Open is on. But um, it's... Uh, Coco Goff and Carolina Mukova against Matt uh, and then Madison Keys and Arena Sabalenka in the women's semifinals. The men's semis. See Ben Shelton and Novak Djokovic and Daniel Medvedev against Carlos Alcaraz. Yeah. Carlos. So, yeah. Love him. Another uh, bucket list item. Go to a major tennis or golf event in the USA. So, Patrick, yep. you're still listening, mate? <laughs> Hook us up, will you? <laughs> Have you ever you've been to the AO in Melbourne? Yeah, a few times. Yeah, yep. Good fun. Great fun. So Dawn Heyman. Again, look at where she's put those bowls. Yeah. Barry Lester, she's been on or behind, and you've spoken to this on or you've spoken about this at great length throughout this tournament. Being on or up as a lead. The short bowls aren't going to do anything as in the area here as very May. close. Esme Kruger coming through the gap. But a good home, nonetheless. She is past arriving weight. Apparently the Rugby World Cup starts tomorrow morning as well. Everything going on at the moment. Formula One back into it. Can't help you with the rugby. Sorry, mate. Union, I've... No, I know nothing yeah, about rugby neither. union. I remember Johnny Wilkinson as Lindsay Clark <laughs> arrives and does nicely. Yeah, beautiful correction for Lindsay. Same thing, just when you get your line with your first bowl to be able to just correct that weight. Very confident in just giving it more weight and, and nailing that line. So Australia, as much as they might be holding two here, I'm not sure if the end win has been played. Still too much room for this very, very experienced and talented South African trio. Well, we're getting to the pointy end of this tournament. Well, 
sorry about my little yeah. gasp there, but I did see that happening. A little bit of... Into a toucher, yeah. if you don't mind. A little the bit of luck, bowls. but... We nearly say it every day, Val. Bowls it, giveth and bowls taketh away. <laughs> it uh, has this unique, well, <laughs> uncanny ability, I guess, the sport of bowls to just keep um, reminding us that... Uh, there is a, a little bit of luck involved in this sport, and as we see Esme there, uh, probably 18 inches to two feet under her line for what she was after, getting a nice slide off the front and wiggling up for shots. So, What has Kelsey Cottrell got? All you want to see now, Val, is it even evens itself out. One to South Africa. Kelsey, not far away, spills the jack back to that bowl, which has touched the jack twice now, and Patrick Duffy... Going to be two great semis for both the men's and women's tennis. He's actually going to the men's semis tomorrow. Oh, how jealous I am. Um, I'd love to be able to go. I haven't actually been able to see Carlos Alcaraz in person. When I covered the AO this year, he pulled out on me, and I wasn't happy with him, but he's unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Dale Hudson asking, do any of the commentators have pre-match rituals or superstitions? Do you mean in terms of our pre-match rituals or superstitions, um, Dale? And if so, Barry, do you have anything or do you just rock up and do you think? Well, is it going to even weight? itself out here? Ooh, not quite. So Kelsey's out of bullets now. And South Africa holding a really good one. Just see the uh, end of this end. Will they try and draw another? Not much room and don't want any movement on that shot bowl. It's be underneath, Baz. Yes, it is. Uh, not for me. It's just obviously uh, take over for a bit of a walk and uh, make sure he's got his, his food and water and leave the TV on for him. And, yeah, just make sure he's all sorted before I, I head off, mate. But uh, in terms of competition, I definitely do always, always make my bed and make it as neat as possible, like it's never been slept in um, game day. That's definitely a ritual for mine. And anyone that's sort of roomed with me over the years sort of make a bit of fun of that, that I keep my room nice and tidy and and uh, make my bed. But that's just a bit of a habit, forced from having a father that was in, in the Navy um, that was very strict on how I yeah. kept my room as a kid. But... Um, yeah, that's that's a, about it for me. If I play unbelievably well, like have a really good day out, I might wear the same. Okay, I think he was asking about the socks. The next oh, very day, nice, but very nice. I think he was asking about our commentary ritual. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah. I don't really have any, mate. I, yeah, neither. I, it's more just to make sure you got a bottle of water, and just in case the throat starts to play up. Or the lollies. Bring, bring some the lollies. strepsils. Yeah, I, I I need to have my coffee before I start. I think that's one thing. But that's just every day for me. I need to have a coffee in the morning. <laughs> so, been a really interesting start. We sit at two apiece after four ends. Of course, we played at 18. South Africa, well and truly... Up for the fight here. Australia have tried to dictate things with their ends, but South Africa have their own game plan. And they have come out firing. They want to spoil the party of Lindsay Clark. And Tabello Muvango puts in her second. Dawn Heyman, what has she got? She's generally been passed and been in the area as she was with her first. Can she make the correction? She is passed. So Barry Lester, not a bad home, as Annika Snyman tells Esme Kruger her instructions and says, this is where you need to bowl. Yeah, very uh, tick for tat at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me, Val. Um, yeah, both both teams will... All, all the uh, six players out there, they've contributed at some stage so far, and that's always good for your confidence. So the the it's hard for us to get a real pick on where this game's going to go at this stage or who's going to sort of be the difference because all the players are contributing. As you see, Dawn and all the players for South Africa, they've been putting them in the area uh, as much as Esme got a bit of a result off the front, but still they've been putting them in there and giving them a chance. And so it's good to see we're in for a really 
tight tussle, especially early on, and and that's what you want. Um, and and it's it's up to us to get a bit of a read for that, a read for the green. And wow, just missing there. I'm sorry about the view, but it's uh, j- just missing there by Lindsay. She literally went through the gap. So I might go have a chat to <laughs> Annika. I'll um. Just give her a... She's a very experienced player. She would have played live stream yep. quite a few times. It's just one of those ones we speak about, Val. Very, yep. very in tune with the game and the, exactly. and the moment. And it's hard to multitask at it times. It is a World Bowls Championships as well. We can't stress that enough. As, as May Kruger puts in her second, gets another nice home. So South Africa building this head well. Claire Day, so great. Won the lady singles at our nationals. So we'll get invited to the Champion of Champions next year. Looking forward to Oz... And looking forward to seeing you out here, Claire. John Pereira, I think KO, Fox and KO, they will be able to give you a, or KO will anyway. If you haven't signed up before, you'll be able to get a free trial for two weeks if you want to watch the uh, the finals this weekend. So you get a two-week free trial before you have to start putting in those credit card details. But see how you go. If you've already done it, obviously it's going to be hard, but maybe maybe see what you can do. You won't want to miss this weekend's finals. It's the first World Bowls Championships in seven years, and it has flown by like that. Already at the pointy end as Annika Snyman. Going to drop short here. South Africa have been well and truly locked in. That easterly breeze comes through, Baz. Yeah, a bit of a uh, bit of an easter at the moment. Just looking at those flags, sort of switching around a little bit at times, but not far away. Kelsey Cottrell, bowl clean. That is why she's one of the best in the business. One down to possibly four up. Absolutely brilliant. From the home club member. Yeah, looking for the jack to kick to the side. Ends up going with it. Perfect weight control. One or two down to four up. Annika Snyman. Well, this is the biggest test of the morning so far for South Africa. What will her response be? Needs to cut it down at least. That is a huge bowl from Kelsey Cottrell. And it's bowls like that that can spur on a tournament. Annika Snyman, two-time Commonwealth medalist, very vastly experienced in this sport, star in her own right. They want to leave here with a medal here, South Africa. She's gone on the forehand. She's not too far away, but how is her weight control? Will it get back? It won't. Too high. So she's gone too high and too hard. Kelsey Cottrell with an opportunity to make a huge collect to start this contest. We've gone up in one so far. Australia holding four. Queenslander works here, bowls here, represents this club with distinction. And the parochial Hallensvale Hawks fans will be collectively cheering. I don't think she's done enough to get in a fifth, but that is four for Kelsey Cottrell and four for Australia. Yeah, massive play, massive play for the Australians. Once again, Kelsey Cottrell, although it was a high degree of difficulty, that shot, she still did have bowls to play to. And that just breeds that confidence to be able to play up there with that weight control, knowing that there's not a lot of danger if you miss. And it's uh, that's the beauty of these back-end players, of, of the ability of Kelsey Cottrell. When you've got bowls in the area and bowls to play to, it just gives you a sense of freedom and gives you a sense of that you can, you can really achieve what you set out to do. 
It was the setup from Lindsay and Dawn to get bowls in the area as well. They gave Kelsey a lot to work with and put that front end pressure on despite South Africa holding shot. As the skips made their way down, it was Kelsey Cottrell with her first that broke the end wide open and quite possibly broke the match wide open. Australia 6-2 after five. Moving along at pretty quick pace this morning. Tabello Muvango looking to outdo Dawn Heyman with those blue XGs. There was an air of relaxation amongst the South Africans this morning. They've been here in these big matches before. Commonwealth Games finalists from last year. Very capable and very handy players, all of them. You don't go home with a Commonwealth Games medal for nothing, let alone get to a final. And Dawn Heyman yet again. Lindsay Clark's mum watching on with the full green and gold kit on. Therese, Teresa, she's an absolute star. Loves her bowls. Loves the Aussie team. And her daughter's biggest fan. Esme Kruger just popping one at the back, so may come in handy. Dawn Heyman, two bowls inside, two and a half feet. That's what it's all about. Just giving your teammates an opportunity to do their role, play their role when the bowls are in there. And that's a good bowl by Lindsay too because... It's pretty much right on the tee. Australia <coughs> have got that at the moment. The winner of this to play the winner of England and Ireland. Of course, this triples team played England in the fours final. Jamie Lee Marshall and Lorraine Culler in that team and Catherine Rednall played the singles, but she's in this triples lineup. Lindsay Clark wanting this to clear the front, and it will. It'll slide on through. Yeah, great weight control from the Aussies. So not actually peppering the jack in terms of sitting on top of it, which is one of the hardest things you can consistently do, but just creating pressure, creating, you know, making the bowls, getting them in the head, making them just have some kind of value. But Esme Kruger, well, this is not bad. It needs to hang around, contact and stay. Well, it's going to reduce the count, probably one down. So all of a sudden, South Africa probably have second and third, which changes the head dramatically. Does. Colin Bray watching on. Big weekend of sport coming up. Basketball World Cup, first week of NRL, AFL Finals, Rugby World Cup, racing, plenty going on, and the World Bowls Championship Finals will reach its climax. We've had seven gold medals decided, four more to go. This women's triples is one of them. Annika Snyman wants to be right in the thick of it for South Africa. Nice shot there. Well played. That's come in from a high line. So that breeze has just switched around now. And it's uh, nearly a straight northerly all of a sudden. It's coming straight from behind us, which is the north, Val. And that has switched around. So I was interested to see why that bowl turned in so much. Does Kelsey try and get another one in there, sit or trail, or go straight at it? Well, going pretty firm. It's getting down too, so the breeze has really ripped yeah. out across the head. Look at that go. Starting to gust slightly now. Those flags are really starting to get up. It's a shame because such a beautiful morning. It is. Flags were pretty limp for a while before that, but Annika Snyman with an opportunity to pop in a second here and rectify half of the four that they conceded. 
She's out on a wide line, but they are turning back pretty well. Needs to clear that front bowl. She won't. So Australia with a couple of seconds in there. South Africa continue to tick over in ones. They win their third end of the contest. We haven't had a multiple end in a row. And at the moment, the decisive end has been end five, where Australia netted a four thanks to a piece of Kelsey Cottrell brilliance. But South Africa continue to push on. Sabella Muvango, Esme Kruger and Annika Snyman, they were with Francesca Baleri in the women's fours, got through to the quarterfinals. And Australia, well, they've lost the jack in the, uh, they've lost the jack here again. So Dawn Heyman straight up again for Australia. So, they, yeah, they lost to New Zealand in the women's fours quarterfinals, 15-12. That was Leanne Paulson, Selena Goddard, Val Smith and Caitlin Inch. So they've got form at the tournament already, this triples lineup. So second lost Jack, South Africa's first. Armand Ascari Kufi. So Annika, in these conditions, she will be brilliant. Used to the wind in Cape Town. I imagine it would be quite windy down there. It's one of the most, I think it's the most southern tip of Africa. I'd love to head down there. Table Mountain overlooking what looks to be a really beautiful city. And I remember, I think, that Australian cricket team has played there a couple of times and I think that was the setting of good old Sandpaper Gate. But the ground looks absolutely <coughs> picturesque. Patrick Duffy, Australia and the USA in the men's fours. The Aussies currently leading that 4-2 after four. The other results at the moment, New Zealand leading Hong Kong 7-1. Cook Islands leading Scotland 5-3 after four. Well, wouldn't that be an upset? And then Ireland and Wales. Ireland leading that 4-0. Com Games winning quartet there. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon, wherever you're watching from around the world. Dawn Heyman again. Is the crowd starting to lift? The grandstand starting to pack out here? Sure are, Val. The crowd Australian. really appreciating those shots from Dawn Heyman. But again, she's getting them past. Tabello plays out of Johannesburg. Annika plays in Cape Town. I would love to get over there at some stage. The uh, south side grandstand starting to fill. They're right above this game. Well, Esme trying hard. Perfect weight. It's probably two bowls too high. I think South Africa need to get on Dawn's hand, though. As you can see, Esme trying to turn that front blue bowl up. Lindsay's got a clean access on the backhand, as did Dawn. Jack going to move. It sure is. Well, Stiff really probably kicked it too far, did Lindsay? Well, that we was know. her intent, though, to tuck it around the corner. We know when we get Jack movement, it can often travel a fair way. And we saw yesterday in the final match at Broadbeach with just how the green was turning in that women's pairs match between Australia and Fiji. That Jack was almost on the verge of frequent flyer miles as... This one here from Esme Kruger. I reckon gives shot back to South Africa. So we're almost back to the centre line. The jack has been moved a couple of times already. Lindsay Clark. Forehand just running on. Needs to stay up though. Well, it's too. Well, it's going to go in. One thing I love uh, about... Uh, the greens here also, Val, you don't see it very, well, hardly anywhere you go really, is the beach sand in the ditches. 
So you see the nice beach sand versus... Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, just versus, um, you know, other, other forms of sand or, or, or dirt. So, yeah, the actual white beach sand, it's a, it's a great look. And, um, Does Nathan Rice just head down to surfers and just pick up a couple of bags full? And Oh, I'm sure he'd organise <laughs> someone to do that for him. Uh, but, no, it just looks great, just that bright white-looking sand and... Um, it's another, yeah, just a cosmetic feel for, for the greens and the makeup of the club here as we see this bowl coming in. Annika Snyman. She needs the jack now. She is quick. We'll sit the bowl then. Oh, Annika, that'll do. That will do. So South Africa have built a brilliant head. Three behind. Kelsey Cottrell needs to get one back there. It's definitely two. Possibly even a third, and I reckon from the angle that we've got of the head. Kelsey looks pretty good here. Needs it to pull up. Well, oh, she's cut stiff. it down. She so is, stiff. She's definitely cut it down. That's for sure. <coughs> that is so stiff there from Kelsey. Any contact on the jack or, or that wing blue bowl. She actually found the hole. Australia haven't lost an end in this direction. One of the recent matches we did on this green a couple of days ago, Disco against Tony Chung as a nice little finish there from Annika Snyman. That's the boss. Yeah, one in, one out, yep. I, I believe. So that's two to South Africa. And if they score here, it is game on. Kelsey Cottrell, not many options here. Has to play just around the front ones. We're talking millimetres past the front and then look to get back. Now, they're somewhat interested, but she is going to miss high here, Barry Lester. Yeah, still 2-2 two, two South Africa. Oh! Now, what's it done? That could have potentially brought in the other. It's going to be close. They're going to have a measure, but South Africa will be the first team to secure multiple ends in a row. So we're hearing a huge cheer. I'm looking around everywhere to find where that's coming from. It, it's, New Zealand have done something. There's a big group of New Zealanders in the crowd there, all sitting together cheering. So Val Smith has uh, played a big bowl by the sounds. Three for South Africa, Barry Lester. And all of a sudden, after the Aussies raced out to a 6-2 buffer, South Africa have rectified it within just two ends. Australia have not won on a length that they've controlled. And they'll be right across that, Val. They'll, they'll know. Speaking of Nathan Rice, over there preparing the indoor green under the beautiful brand new Mac Max roof, as you can see in the background there. A grand opening on Monday. And the World Championships are over. They'll get everyone together and do a bit of a grand opening. Brilliant facility. Club Helensville just goes from strength to strength. They do. And uh, where they're situated too, Val helps. Only 15-minute drive to the heart of the Gold Coast in terms of surface and Broad Beach and all that, and plus just off the freeway. So get access to the club's very easy. And that Westfield Shopping Centre, well, I first saw that Westfield Shopping Centre across the road about 2003, 2004, it's grown and, exponentially. Oh yeah, and then you've got the the tram, uh, the train station over there. So, so it's a a, rake, a really good hub for a lot of things here. Is Helensvale, and of course you've got the fun parks, all the theme parks yeah. only only just up the road. Top Golf not far. Warner Brothers Movie World, Wet and Wild also not far. Warner Brothers is great fun, but um. Yeah, the shopping centres continue to grow all around the country. We're, we're from in Melbourne, Chadston and High Point. They just continue to get bigger and bigger. As Tabello just halves the jack and pushes it towards that Dawn Heyman Bowl. And Dawn again reaps the rewards of being passed. But South Africa, they have sent a statement to Australia. And despite Kelsey Cottrell's brilliance on N5 to secure a four... The brilliance of South Africa to secure a three in the last end. Sensational.
So, at the moment, Australia trying to wrestle the score and the momentum back. South Africa, 6-2 down. They've levelled it at six apiece after seven ends. It's been a seesawing contest, and Lindsay has found not a bad home. I reckon she would have liked a bit more weight there. The Cook Islands have stormed out to a 9-3 lead over Scotland in the men's fours after five ends. Wouldn't that be some sort of an upset? Yeah, very uh, very good team. Uh, bumped into Jamie Hill yesterday, actually. Very, very well credentialed and highly rated player that's represented New Zealand on many occasions. Well, Esme Kruger on the forehand sitting the shot bowl. Great shot there, two down to one up. Yeah, so when you look at their team... Uh, Cook Islands, they're a well credentialed set up there, so they're going to be, um, yeah, they're going to be a tricky team to play against. They are. South Africa have the answers at the moment. Lindsay Clark needs it to hold. It's going to find a gap. It slides through, but again, that's not a bad home. Sitting yeah. right and right at the back of the rink, you can see it there in your pictures. Thanks, Locke, and just at the corner. There, that's not a bad home for Lindsay Clark. And if that jack does get spilled out, and we're tending to see that the angle, the forehand at the moment for the right hand up is the preferred uh, the preferred hand to use bowling in this direction, away from Discovery Drive, towards the bushland at the back and the backyards of some of these houses that overlook the club. Yeah, Sophie Monk used to live in that house. The I monks did hear this the other day. Apparently, you could always hear her singing. She yeah. used to do karaoke inside Club Helen's Vale. We used to walk past every day, pretty much. We'd be playing events here, walking the dog. and So Sophie uh, grew up in that house, the Monk family. She's uh, kicking goals at the moment, Sophie Monk. Australia, Kelsey Cottrell on the forehand. Sit the ball, trail the jack. Needs to hold. She get a little bit of luck off her f off the front. She won't. So they've built a really nice head here, and there's an opportunity for Kelsey with a little nudge of the jack to make a f to make another collect. But South Africa, they've just had all the answers at the moment. They have been sensational this morning. It's yeah. a really evenly matched contest. The ability just to um, play the big ones when it matters so far for South Africa, as we see, it's six all. As much as we want to, you know, both teams want to get bowls in there and surround the jack all day long, but they've just made the most of a few opportunities here. The um, last, last end, the jack spat out in the open. Australia held a couple, but then they made three out of that, so they really did make the most of that opportunity. Uh, Australia put a couple around it. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a jack high set up for um, Australia, and then we see they sit the bowl and make the shot, and just making the most of your opportunities that present. Has Annika Snyman Baz, has she gotten in the way there of Kelsey's hand? Or is she going to go full attack? She sure is. Here we go. Big weight from Kelsey Cottrell. Not far away. Will she get some sort of a result? She will, I think. Now we won all. See, that's the, what I was telling you about, Val, yep. when Esme got that little rub early on. So the Aussies do get the shot. They get that little bit of luck. And they end that run of South African ends. Well, it was only two, but it's the only time we've seen multiple ends one. As we near the halfway point of this match, Australia lead at 7-6. We're being treated to an enthralling contest this morning. As we get a big cheer from Green 1. Not sure what that was for. I can only imagine it might have been for the Cook Islands. Also, Val, what I really like about the Aussie girls, then they never celebrated that result. So yep. Kelsey was off Respect. course. Yep, Kelsey was off course, didn't quite get what she was going for, and not one Australian player celebrated that result. Respect to the opposition. But as I said, South Africa got a result earlier. Australia got a result then. It's one all, and that's what you want to see. You want to see it even out. No one's trying to play for luck. It's just what happens in the game. You just hope that at the end of the day, it's evenly shared. Exactly right, Barry Lester. We love when matches are played in good spirit. This one certainly has been so far. High level of respect between the two trios. Olivia Buckingham, you might know her as Olivia Bloomfield. Australian Open women's pairs winner in 2022 with Paris Baker. Hi, boys. Just wanted to let you know you're doing an awesome job. It's been a pleasure listening to you. Well, we're glad 
Well, we're glad that you've loved it, Olivia. You're doing a wonderful job here at Club Helensvale. And an absolute star, one of the characters of the, of the sport. Gave us one of the all-time speeches after winning that, uh, that title in 2022. It's one that I probably won't forget. I was in tears of laughter. Dawn Heyman, two ripping bowls to start. What can Tabello Muvango respond with? Dawn Heyman, wow, two touches in one end. That's just uh, that's just class, as we see there. Just pulling up short. So South Africa under the pump a little here. Two bowls inside, eighteen inches. Nothing quite near it for them just yet, but that back bowl may come into play, Val. Although it might be six feet away, you just never know. Lindsay Clark might just sit in between them. Oh, no. And it's a sideways caterpillar. And this, well, <laughs> that's, I reckon, made up the mind of the South Africans here. That's a target. And a big, juicy red target at that. Yeah, these are the opportunities South Africa to go make the most of, As again, as we spoke about. Big target. Looking to disturb the head or trail the jack out of there. Missing high. I think that's... That weight's gone now. I don't think Esme should play that weight again. I think she needs to go a bit more direct because that weight won't disturb the head in terms of removing the red balls. So if Esme comes down and sort of shifts those red balls, they're only going to shift a foot or two. I'd be surprised if she plays that weight again. But Lindsay, she'll be looking to trail the jack around the corner here. Nice home. That's the second best result you can get. See what happens here. Backhand again from Esme. Will she play more weight? She's gone out wide. She hasn't gone big. Maybe she's waiting. Is she waiting for Annika Snyman to play the weighted shot? But Australia can get themselves in the way here and possibly get something back. They've built up a pretty good head here at the back, but it just would you have liked to have seen more attack from Esme now and just, really go yeah, for it? Yeah, just with the target being so wide for me, Val. Because you know, Australia can change that up, can't they? Well, obviously it's three bowls wide, that target. Then you add the gap and the width of the jack, so it's about four, four and a half bowls wide. And I just thought Esme would have been a bit more direct at that disturbed because even if she doesn't shift the jack and she gets a few bowls out well she reduces the count but uh, Annika I reckon she'll be right through this because jack in the ditch can make three or four or you t take a lot out of the head and reduce so see Kelsey she wants Kelsey. to trail this jack if she can it's a massive result for the Aussie she's got it and she's covered it around and Barry you said that they should have gone for it, South Africa. They might be ruining a missed opportunity. They still can. and But it just makes it all the more difficult for Annika Snyman. Especially with that breeze, Val. So the breeze is going, when you look at the screen, right to left. So you the breeze. Weight. We are seeing weight. This is going to drop into the front. And skewed it away. So South Africa, this is now panic stations because Australia... Well, they're holding five. It probably won't stay that way. Have a look at this from Kelsey Cottrell again in this direction, finding something special. Yeah, turning it into a four-bowl target, from a four-bowl target into probably now, yeah, two and a half, three bowls. So it's very narrow. But now that front bowl's been shifted. And I guess you can see all of this head now. So, And Lindsay Clark telling Kelsey to cover. Wade Eels, just blessed to have Barry on the mic with you to call this match, Val. And, yep, exactly right. I've been lucky to have Baz this whole fortnight. Stephen Wells loving Barry's input. Explaining the head, the position of bowls. This is an interesting one as well, Val. So as much as you want to put a bowl right where Lindsay's foot is and, and cover the three down, it's such a, well... The last thing you obviously want to do is go into the ditch. But if Kelsey doesn't get to the back, she's obviously, obviously adding another one. So then that yep. creates more pressure again. Well, that's what she's done. She's actually put it in a really good spot. So this is currently a full count to Australia, I think. 
And if Esme Kruger misses again, oh, sorry, um, Annika Snyman misses again. I was looking at Esme then. But if Annika Snyman misses again, this is... This is danger signs because they dropped a big four in this direction. Not last time, but the time before. Well, this is all about percentages. Do you back yourself to, say, draw within a foot, 18 inches, and cut it back to two or three? Or do you back yourself to actually hit this head and potentially make two or three? It comes back to you and your preferences. And What, how what you would think. your preference be, Baz? Oh, well, it's so early in the game. I think uh, I'd, I'd probably... Try and draw a third or fourth shot. Annika Snyman. Gone big again. <clears throat> Better line this time, though. Not far away. Clears a couple out. Oh, cuts it back to one. Great shot. That is a great shot there from Annika Snyman. It was dangerous, but the reward there, she scored five with it essentially because she was a full count down Barry Lester and you love to see that Val so if it's not a draw if it's a drive or vice versa you've got to back yourself it can't be walking back to the mat wondering what you want to do getting standing behind the mat I'm not sure what to do you've walked up to the head you've had a chat with your teammates you walk back to the mat execute the shot and it was clear as she walked back and turned around she wanted to play that weight again good on her and she did it well and reduced it back to one. So That's why she's a two-time Commonwealth Games medalist, Annika Snyman. It's a great delivery. And Australia, they win multiple ends in a row for the first time in this match. 8-6 they lead at the halfway point. That's a big save. And Baz, you've just put a little asterisk next to, the, uh, next to that end. How important could that be? Dawn Heyman. Wow. Three touches in a row. Well, she's uh, sometimes when playing some games, Val have a little touch account with my teammates. And, uh, well, I wouldn't want to be doing it right now with Dawny. <laughs> uh, she's, uh, she's playing a special brand of bowls. And at the moment, England having a really good match against Ireland at the moment. Can't quite see the scoreboard. They were up 8-2 after four. Yeah, so that little asterisk, great reply there. That little asterisk for me is just a reminder. So you can do this on your card in any game you're playing, club events or so on, just to put a little uh, a reminder of the the um, surplus shots that were saved. So what Annika did, that was a pressure act. And we already saw in one of the comments there, uh, great bowl under pressure. So if you play a pressure shot, a pressure act, you can actually put a little asterisk on the end. Four what touches a, in a row. That is unbelievable. This is a sensational end. Tabalo Muvango did a wonderful job to wrestle shot back from Dawn Heyman, but Dawn said, anything you can do, I can do better. But what has Tabalo Muvango got? The yeah. South African... On the backhand again. Needs to get down. Yeah, so that little asterisk. So when you're filling out your card in a club event or a pennant event in some kind of environment, what you can do is just do a little asterisk or just maybe put a little number next to that end because if you're skipper... Remembering, if you're the second, you've got the card. If your skipper saves four, five, six, seven shots, just put a, a little number next to that particular end, and then you can look back at the end of the day and you can turn to your skipper and say, win, lose, or draw. You know, he, he, We've written down some numbers here that indicate the shots you saved, and we've come up that you, know, you saved 14, 15 shots today and played some great pressure acts. Another little tip is uh, you can circle the number on the crossover, so if you're a second playing in a fours event, maybe in a pennant environment, you might want to uh, just circle the number when you get to the other end and just to indicate that you're uh, holding on the crossover. And you can see how many times, nice shot there from Esme. You can see how many times you actually won the front end battle. So that's the lead, second and third. And at the end of the day, you can look back on your card, say over 21 ends, and you can see all the circles and you can see how many ends you won the front of the front end battle. So these are the little stats, and I men mentioned for those who are listening the other day, your card will tell tell you so many stories. Uh, keep an eye on the card and, and try and fill it out to the best of your ability. As Lindsay comes down, good shot, just not turning it far enough. One to South Africa still. Esme Kruger's bowl still holding sway. Cook Islands in the men's fours lead Scotland 10-3. That, of course, consists of Foster and Marshall. That's there, the big roars that we can hear from Green One, Barry Lester. Yeah, and the fours in 2016, Val, I spoke about it briefly before in the men's fours. I'm pretty sure 
New Zealand would have won that by about 20 shots. So we're not hoping that happens again by Cook Islands, but I'm just saying that's um, the last time the Scottish men's fours faced finals at World Bowls. Um, I think it was the semi-final where New Zealand may have won by yeah somewhere around the 20 shot mark. So it can happen, but ideally um, you want to see all games be be close and and both teams and all players contributing. But you never know. Sometimes some patterns of some games can get away from you. And we've seen South Africa uh, here today. What they've been able to do as Australia's got the crowd, they've been working with Dawn's touches and the momentum. What South Africa's been able to do is just chip away, try and play the, the percentage bowls, and that's for me, is keeping them in this match. So, Kelsey and Annika will do battle once again. This has been an enthralling contest so far. I've enjoyed every second of it this morning. It's close, and South Africa they will back themselves in as Annika Snyman, she's not a world away here, just needs it to run. It doesn't. Sitting nicely, though. They've got a nice pack of bowls around the jack. Australia control the tee. Kelsey, I like this, comes down to have a look. There's, of course, no time limit, Barry Lester. You can do whatever you like. You can play all day if you need. Wouldn't recommend it, but you can. So you can see Dawn Heyman over to the bottom corner corner of the screen there. So Dawn, Dawn's just chatting as well. And this is, like I said the other day, this is a free lesson for all the bowlers out there. Lindsay's animated, hand gestures, voice. You see Dawn over there in the corner. She's seeing and contributing. She's just probably saying some verbals to Kelsey like, you've got this, mate. You can get it. Lindsay's saying the same. So for people out there that are playing a lot of fours, pennant environment bowls, just remember, even though you've played your bowls, you have a role to play off the mat. Lindsay clapping again. So all that encouragement with your voice, with your physical, so clapping, tapping people on the back, goes a long way to helping performance and, and achieving what you need to set out to achieve. And as we see, Lindsay, uh, Kelsey can't play these shots with the all the confidence she needs without her team supporting her. Kelsey She's needs it to hold, here. not far away. It's dropping... Well, she got a little bit of a result. I'm not sure if it's one to Australia. But they'll analyse it. She was not a world away, but might just have been a fortunate result. I think South Africa still play this for me, Val, even though they might be down. Forehand, work off the blue, trail the jack, out Make to a number. four o'clock for potentially three or four shots. I can't see much bad to come of it. The worst result maybe is... If they turn the front red too hard through the jack. But for me, a lot going for them on the forehand. But they might declare it if they've got it. So umpire, the first thing you'll see them do is chock that blue bowl. Reaching for a chock straight away. Well, Esme's got one in her pocket. And I mentioned that the other day. You did. As soon as both players call umpire, and let's say the umpire, not in this specific event, Val, but sometimes an umpire might be a, maybe a minute away. You know, it could be even a little bit longer by the time they get their equipment and come to the green. If you're playing third, lead in a pair, so on and so on, carry those chocks with you. The moment you declare you want an umpire, the time between calling an umpire to the time they 100%. get there, you must try and chock that bowl ASAP because so many times we've seen bowls fall over before the umpire gets there and then it's that can really hurt, hurt the, uh, the measure, the outcome. So, South Africa deciding not to bowl. And that is 1-2 South Africa. So, 8-7 Australia lead. This match remains close, remains tight. And the winner remains unknown. Bello Muvango. What a match this is proving to be. Some excellent shot making. Is this going into the ditch? It pulls up.
So nobody yet to win, or nobody to win three ends in a row yet. South Africa won two on the bounce. Australia won the last two. And South Africa respond with one of their own. And Tabello Muvango getting this one in. It's going to come into a good home. It's gone past. And if that Jack does get trail back, it comes into play. Can Dawn zero in like she has done all morning? She's led expertly. The front end pressure has been good. Two-time Australian champion of champions winner, Dawn Heyman. And a bit stiff that the years that she won that were 2019 and 20. Didn't actually get to go and play for the World Bowls champion or the World Champion of Champions. Tristan Smallacombe, another victim of that as well. Winning the, 29, uh, the 2020 Champion of Champions in 2021 at Dandenong Club. Club Dandenong. Ray Pierce as well in 2019. Didn't go, didn't get to go and represent Australia for the world title, but he will get to go next year to Guernsey to play the World Bowls Indoor Championships. Him and Samantha Atkinson will be heading over. And Aaron Sheriff as well as a defending champ. in Guernsey next year, currently. Yeah. yeah, isn't it interesting how things work out in the end? So Ray Pierce didn't get to play in the World Champion Champions, but he comes and wins the indoor and gets to play in the World Cup next year. So just crazy how that works out, Val. And he'll get two opportunities to win a gold. Of course, the, the addition of the Mixed Pairs event, which Aaron Sheriff and Kelsey Cottrell won this year. So Aaron Sheriff has won two world championships already in 2000, or three well, three world championships already in 2023. Playing some unbelievable bowls as he looks to add a fourth in the men's fours and maybe the Leonard Trophy, who knows? Lindsay Clark puts one in close. Yeah, that's an interesting one for me, Val. Um, if you win the Leonard Trophy, you are the men's overall champions. For me, I would probably consider that as a world title, a team world yeah. title. So, I've been calling that, and I've been yeah, uh, with with the articles that I've been writing. I've been calling it a two time on green world champion because you won it on the green with either yourself or you know one other person. Yep, and then. You can call it, the, and then I say, and two-time Taylor or Leonard or Taylor winning trophy. That's how I've sort okay. of gone around yeah. it. Yeah. Because Wikipedia sort of counts it as a world championship, which it is because you get a gold medal at the tournament. So yeah, because um, you know, you look at the Ellie Shield, say for instance, or the Marge Morris Trophy. The overall, it's a obviously a twelve-player team event. If you win that, you you are a national champion. Exactly. So yeah, and it's no. an extra medal well, that you get. Well put. Well put. So, Australia currently holding sway, thanks to Lindsay Clark. The skips make their way down. South Africa want to level it. All go ahead. Jenny Nicole, she's from Guernsey. We've had the Guernsey contingent out here. Lucy Beer, what a star she is. One of our three Commonwealth medalists after last year's women's singles. Joining the 1986 women's pairs team that won a silver. I think that was in Victoria, 1986. And Allison and Ian Merrion, the husband-wife combination, dominating the indoor circuit up there. Very formidable opponents, those two. So what has Annika Snyman got? The line wasn't too bad. Just dropping short. Kelsey Cottrell. Took some time away from the Jackaroos while remaining in the squad. <clears throat> Looking to get around the back. She was trying to get rid of that South African bowl, but it goes in the ditch. How special would it be for Kelsey Baz to... 
go out with a World Bowls Championships goal, considering she wasn't in Birmingham last year. Obviously, two young kids. Yeah, big family commitments from all these athletes. And great to see some families here too, Val, that have travelled from all around the world. Yep, Dawn Heyman's entourage has followed her along and big support. Christina Christick and Alan Ryan, their partners were here. I think Chrissy's dad also came to watch. Kelsey Cottrell. Not a bad effort. The Aussies, they get one. And they move to a 9-7 lead after 11. Seven ends to play. It is mightily close. And Barry, we look at the 11, 11 ends that we've played. Nine of them have been singles. There's been two major collects, a four and a three. One to Australia with the four, one to South Africa with the three. But since then, all, all around, it's been only singles. So everyone has been in the head, everyone contributing equally, everyone putting their best foot forward. Yeah, as I said from the, the start of the, this uh, broadcast, Val, this South African team, very, very highly credentialed team. We, you rolled off all their achievements and resumes at the start of the match and... This game is right in the balance. All six players playing great level of bowls and conversion shots, draw shots. And what I really love as well um, from all the players is the team chemistry. Everyone contributing to shot selection. Everyone contributing to, um, you know, the, the, the bowl smarts of this game. And this is what can help win a game of bowls. Not only playing well, but working well as a team and, all, and backing each other up. And both countries are doing that so well today, which is creating this high level of bowls, but also the fact that we can't really pick who can win this game because all players are contributing so well. So I don't think the the end win has been played yet. No. So we've got both bowls back there at the tee, so they're well and truly in the game. And we've got Dawn Heyman's shot bowl a couple of feet past. I just feel either Australia or South Africa will end up playing a better bowl than what's played so far. As we see another fairly close bowl there from Lindsay in behind the jack. But the way these uh, the South African team's been playing so well, Going to see some action these last four or five deliveries, no doubt, Val. I'm really loving this game. It's been really good, hasn't it? We're seeing forehand, backhand. We're seeing weight control, seeing big weight at times. So all the players showcasing their skills and show, showing us why they've got deep in this World Championships. This is a tense contest this morning. Val McKenzie asking where the men's fours are. They're just on the green to our left. Green one here at Club Helensvale. We're sitting on green three. They'll be up here. After this, only two sessions tonight. Esme, just taking a bit of extra time over this one. Just needs to take two feet of weight off and probably... Only one bowl of width. Really staring this one down, taking her time. She knows three down. She needs to get another one close. Reduce the room for Australia. Yeah, we'll needs to hang around. Going to drop under Barry. Good weight will save her here. Well, she's played it well, Esme. She's only one down now. Took her time on that. Really concentrated a lot more on that one. As we saw it, turned away quite hard at the end there, Velt. Yep, and good body language here as well. 
And that's just that uh, just that area where the jack's in is the most worn area, yeah, even though the greens see. are beautiful and they're perfect, don't get me wrong. You can see there's little tinges around where it's a bit darker, that's, the grass. That's and right. Look, it's been two weeks of wear on these greens. Yeah. It's and, going to happen. And that's where, when I was asked recently, where, where do I like to put the jack when I'm playing? I always like to try and put the jack where the grass is most even. And as we're seeing here, just in particular where the jack is right now, will be one of the harder places to get right on top of the jack just because you're coming through the, the middle of the greens are going to be a little bit less compacted and played on and worn. And then as it starts to get into this area now, it'll just start to run on nicely and turn back. And here it comes. So Arnica just missing a little bit high on that. But So where does Kelsey go now, Barry? What do you, If you're Kelsey Cottrell, what are you doing here to try and ensure that you can just keep the keep the pressure on. Yeah, for me, it's forehand draw looking to sit the South African bowl. And if you're under, you get another one in there. Now, because, she's not far away here, Barry. Because she doesn't want to set up a target, make it easy for the opposition. Very close. Well, she is underneath, and she will put in another counter. I reckon this is probably a three. So this is a big bowl for Annika Snyman. They're down by two. This is her last bullet. Change of hands. It needs to start working its way back. It's not going to. And we're going to get a little measure. I reckon this is a three. Could it even be a fourth? Dawn's got the match. He's ready. I love the body language from Dawn, how quick she is. She wants to get on with it. She's hungry. The Australians are hungry for more shots. It's another multiple... Just the third of the match. We reckon this is a three. And it is a four. That is massive. Huge. And South Africa, after being in touching distance, or within touching distance have dropped five from the last two ends and are all of a sudden down by a full count. After 12, the Australians, they lead at 13-7. Multiples, well, we don't like to see them. Uh, only when they're on our side in terms of uh, when you're playing an event out there, any level, you want to be the one that scores, scores the multiples. But in this case... South Africa dropping a four there. But as we've seen this game play out, we're already on the 13th end. So Dawn's put the map back here. This is a longer end. Australia have changed tactics. They haven't had too much luck with the shorter ones today. Haven't yeah. won a lot of them. Great spot, Val. Great spot. Dawny here all over it again. Doesn't matter where you put the mat or the jack. Dawn Heyman will find a way. Yeah, three or four ends ago in this direction, Val. You saw Australia hold six. So that rings really tr fresh and true in their mind. So they're just thinking, well, that was over a longer length. We want to try and do that again and uh, try and you know do what they know best. But the way South Africa has been up for the challenge. Barry, just some live scores of the men's fours quarterfinals. New Zealand lead Hong Kong 10-3 after seven. Scotland and Cook Islands 11-6 in favour of the Cook Islands after eight. Australia lead the USA 9-4 after 8. And then Ireland and Wales, Ireland 8-6 after 8. Some close matches. Yeah, I think it's the hardest game of the tournament is the quarterfinal, Val. You're dancing around, dancing around the, the thoughts of potentially not winning a medal and um, the thoughts of if you win, you know, you're going on to get a medal. And they're like the prelim in football. Yeah, It's a bit of... Uh, one directional result stuff. So yeah, the quarterfinals. You'll find these these games here today, uh, the make or break games, and that's where players will leave everything out on the green, give it their best shot, and know whatever the result is that they've tried their best at this stage of the tournament. It's um it's a, a bit of a weird feeling. I must admit, having played in quite a few in my time, you don't really focus on the result at all. It, you just got to treat it literally like another game of bowls, like another pool game. But 
It's easier but, said than done, though. But that's right. But sometimes it just can creep into your mind that, wait a minute, if, uh, if we don't win today, we're actually going home and it's all over. And for Australia, well, they don't have far to travel, but for the, some of these countries, um, it's a long way to go home. And I know every player we're watching out there on this rink today, as we see, they're just giving it their all. Great voice, great encouragement. And we're the only s- separation between these two teams right now is just that last multiple. Yep. A fair few have, or a lot of the ramifications in this match have come from multiples. Now, New Zealand against Malaysia, just a couple of rinks over. Malaysia led 9 7. New Zealand have just scored a three. And they lead it. Leanne Paulson, Taylor Bruce, and Val Smith. Taking the lead there. Australia leading 13-7 here. Two fours for the Aussies. Only three multiples scored across the 12 ends played so far. Everything else has been singles. Two fours really telling for Australia. On end five and on end 12. And that is mighty from Lindsay Clark. The Australians have stepped it up. Their quarterfinal of the women's fours against Hong Kong, China was closely fought as well. South Africa will do their utmost. And this one from Esme Kruger is going to join that back bowl of Australia. Don't think it's going to come into play, however. Kelsey Cottrell and Annika Snyman will make their way down to the head or to the mat. Barry Lester, Australia are on the precipice. But South Africa are going to try and push them all the way to the finish line. Yeah, definitely, Val. Once again, Australia just doing enough here, holding one, potentially two. South Africa with their class and experience, they'll keep making Australia earn it. They're only one or two really good ends away from getting the lead back, and really forcing the hand to the Aussies. Girls nice. asking this one to get down. Oh, it's kicked. Well, that's that'll work. It will. So Australia currently with another handy end and any sort of jack movement for South Africa probably doesn't benefit them. And if I'm Annika Snyman, I'm coming on the forehand here, Barry. Much less danger for her if there is jack movement. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's um, Annika, well, she's been having to play a lot of different stuff. So forehand, backhand, weighted, as we saw a few drives earlier. You, you, you know, every player on this earth in the sport of lawn bowls just wants to be able to try and do the same thing over and over again, catch rhythm and just back yourself in. But sometimes when the game presents itself this way, you're forced to play every shot in the book. And that can really break up that rhythm you're after. This hand for me is a bit lazy. It's not just getting back as much as... The other side, but it needs to work now. This could save quite a few. Well, it will. That could be second. That's a nice shot there from Annika Snyman. Yeah, had to be there. Give it a chance. She played it so well. Uh, you couldn't you're ask right, for it's... a better job from her skip there. Kelsey Cottrell, well, He's... holding one. And you're right, Baz. This, this forehand side has not turned as much as what the backhand side in this direction has. Kelsey Cottrell, well, she'd love one right on top of the jack here. Just bring it in a touch. Try and sneak around the front blue one. Well, I'll tell you what, Baz. Lindsay's got that arm out again. She's waiting for that turn. Is it going to get back? Well, they're cheering it now. Oh, oh yeah. Kelsey That's, Cottrell. That is back. That is brilliant. And you could tell she just left it in it, let it in a touch, and Lindsay liked it out of the hand. Yeah, sit the bowl or trail the jack will be what South Africa will be after here. Now, Annika Snyman, I think this one is going to miss high. It'll try to get back, but Australia get another end. And that is another multiple for the Aussies, and they forge ahead by eight, Barry Lester, 
They've won three ends in a row. It's the first time that it's happened. More importantly, five of the last six. Yeah, momentum, you can tell. Aussies are really springing their step. They're up and about. And they've been able to get some rhythm going because they're forcing the pressure here. So Lindsay, Kelsey and Dawn, majority of their bowls being able to be played on their preferred hand or a hand that they've been playing a lot on. And there's nothing better when you can look up the green all day long and be able to play the same shot all day. Yes, you're going to be uh, asked and challenged at times to play a few different shots, but as we see Dawn here, no reason to even think about playing that backhand. She's just getting down to the centre, bowl after bowl, and that's where you need to finish. That's the perfect lead bowl in the scoring zone and past the jack. So, Australia, primed, ready, hungry. South Africa on the defence. And unfortunately for Tabelo Muvango, her first bowl has gone in the ditch, and Dawn has brought the mat right back up here. So maybe, maybe they're going to try and work at these short ends yet again. Maybe just to change things up and make South Africa change their weight control and make them think about things. And it, it's already worked with a wasted bowl on the bank already. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those ones where it's uh, a, a, it's all about sort of that rhythm, Val, where you might prefer a certain length in a certain direction. You don't have to play the same distance all the time, but there might be just something you prefer in a certain direction. And that would generally come back to wind or, or the elements that you've, you've faced to play. So if you're playing with a tailwind and you're worried that um, over a short length you're going to be very heavy, well, you'll see a lot of players maybe go long. But it is a quite a large test, short ends with the wind behind you versus long ends into the wind. But just knowing that, just knowing that and having that game smarts and being prepared to play to the conditions... And uh, as you see there, Dawn's still put the mat up in this direction, but mat back in the other direction. These tournaments, mightily hard to win. Australia looking to get themselves another, another medal. Of course, Kelsey, Dawn and Lindsay have all accrued one so far in this tournament with the silver in the fours. They want to go home with more, though. Esme Kruger, not far away from the jack here. She's got it. Has it stayed in bounds? Yes, it has. So Australia still won to their names, but different line. Was it not easy to adjust to? Lindsay Clark. Darren Mitchell asking... How many bowlers have been playing and how many nations? 44 Lindsay nations Clark. as Lindsay nails it. And a big high five. Yeah, I was watching that with a lot of interest, knowing that Jack was off the line, Val, just to see what the green and the grass was doing out there. Well, it held on nicely and bumped into that Jack. So Esme, she just needs to get second shot here. If she draws it, it's an absolute bonus, but get second for a skip. And then just start building on something here. Expecting her to play something pretty good here, Esme. Such a class player. Oh, can she get down to the jack herself? Needs to pull up. Needs to pull up now. Well, it's just going to trickle in. Two to Australia. Lindsay Clark. What a bowl. Two South African bowls already in the ditch here at this end. Lindsay Clark, what a morning she's had. What a morning the Australians have had so far. They are eight ahead. Ireland mounting a big comeback here against the English. They were down 15-5, I believe. 15-10 now in favour of the English trio. Ireland... Forged home against Hong Kong, China yesterday. They were down by six at one stage, I believe, to try and get out of the group.
This one, what has Annika Snyman got? He's going to crash in. Yeah, good attempt. Was eh? The line was actually right. It's just Australia had those bowls in the way. Yeah. Kelsey Cottrell with another opportunity. Yeah, really good attempt there. I think the weight was probably good enough, just crashing there. So, Kelsey, well, it's a tricky one for her as much as she wants to get another one in there. She doesn't want to sit next to the shot bowl and create some kind of target. Let's see what she does. She wants to cover the jack ideally. Well, she doesn't want to leave a gap between those two. Well, that's pretty good. So the idea now is to sit the shot bowl on the backhand for Annika. Come down here on the backhand, sit the shot bowl, dislodge it, and stay. So it's a weight critical shot. Direction, yes, of course, you need to have the right direction to, to, to get what you're after, but it's just weight critical now because if she was to go too quick and hit the shot bowl onto the jack and then run off herself, she'll still be Struggle a bit that day. They play a... but It's all about sitting and staying on that shot bowl. Even if she does hit it through the jack, she can stay for one down. Opportunities to, uh, are plenty. To and a lot of players out there at this level, they'll they'll play this shot with their body weight. So they'll just step into it with a bit more force than the normal draw shot. They'll just gain a bit more momentum from their back foot or just um, press off the mat a little, little bit more firmer. And some players choose to maybe just have a, a, a quicker swing speed in their arm. But for Annika here, it's just a matter of just getting through it, stepping into this shot. It's going to get down from there. It's going to get back. Well, she needs a promotion on her own. Well, like I said, come down, sit the shot bowl. Oh, she was so close. Wow. Perfect speed. Great effort there from Annika Snyman. But the Australians, well, they are starting to put their foot down. And it's an 11-shot margin. South Africa only have four ends to try and trim this back. Yeah, it was interesting if um, yeah, when you look at that shot there from Annika, it was a few good results, um, and I love the weight she played. So, if she actually had have halved that jack and, and it went out of bounds, they had a few on the tee there. So, that was another option. So, when you're looking at something in isolation the the shot you're trying to play so sit a bowl and, and get the shot well that's fine but before you decide on playing that shot you got to look at all the other things that come with it if you're narrow if you're wide if you're heavy if you're short and those kind of things so quite often you might see a shot like you're trying to sit a bowl now if you're trying to sit a bowl that's jack high and you're off target and there's a bowl a yard out well the weight that you've got to sit that bowl if you hit that short bowl that's a yard out, it might be enough to hit that bowl up to jack high and count. So you've got to be thinking all the time about the contingency. So then if that is a possibility, you'd play more weight, and then if you hit that short bowl up, it leaves the head. And I really love that weight control then from the South African skip to sit and stay and get shot. If not, look at the option of taking the jack in the ditch or potentially killing it and get the, get the shots on the tee. So these players at this level, they're always thinking, and when you're always thinking... You're on your own. But the beauty about these events and the majority of the time you play the sport of bowls, you have teammates around you to help you when trying to make these decisions. So beautiful lead bowl coming in here. Tabello Muvango. That is just what the doctor ordered. It's been a tough morning for her because Dawn Heyman has been all over it. But Tabello Muvango, she is a Commonwealth Games silver medalist for a reason. Was awesome in Birmingham last year. Lindsay Clark just sliding through. Good home, though. So this is uh, obviously a loose end for, for Dawn. And Lindsay, well, that's not a bad attempt. It's in a really good area. But South Africa, this is, this is their end. If they're to try and pick up a multiple and try and work their way back into this match over the next four ends. Well, they've got to score now and score heavily. They do. And look, of course, the the number of ends now comes into account because there are four left, including this one. South Africa 
they're 11 down. They can't afford to drop more because all of a sudden, if they go down by more, as Esme Kruger finds the jack, currently holding three, this is what they need, South Africa. So, Lindsay, something similar for me. Forehand, body language is really positive. That's what's when like. isn't it positive from Lindsay, though? Kelsey leaning in, too. Is it going to hang on or get away? So, Australia, they've not quite found it so far. So South Africa holding three, I believe. And the multiple Australia got in this direction four or five ends ago, oh, sorry, in the other direction, was that the moment that really broke this game. Yep. Can South Africa try and strangle it back with a multiple of their own? Well, the... the Problem for South Africa is that before end before end twelve, only two multiples had been scored in this match. One to Australia with a four on end five, South Africa with a three on end seven. But the last three ends, Australia's won five of the uh, sorry six of the last seven. But the last three ends, a four, a two, and a three to the Australians, and they've gone from nine seven to eighteen seven. We do apologise, just getting the... Yeah, momentum's everything in this sport. And cameras. And momentum's everything in a lot of sports. So if the, the momentum's working for you, got to keep running with it. And then sometimes it just that just isn't. You've got to try and take it off the opposition. Little team meeting, go grab a drink of water. Just sometimes take your time, break the rhythm of the game up. It's Kelsey Cottrell trying to look to sit this shot bowl or trail the jack out of there. Well, she's under. So that hand there, you can see that sharpness in that turn just picking up. Wow, that's really getting away. Well, South Africa currently lying two, maybe three. Can they get it back to double figures somewhere around 10 or 11? And then we know, Val. Well, game anyone's. on. Game on. Annika Snyman just needs to be in the area. And she looks to be. This is a very good delivery, I think. She's getting close. Sits it. Has it framed it, though, Barry Lester? Has she framed it for Kelsey Cottrell to go big? The target's there. Oh, very, very unfortunate result for South Africa there. Australia, Kelsey's going to come up. Australia with three down and only a one-bowl target to aim at. Now they're still at least three down, but they've got probably at least a four-bowl target when you... When you look from bowl to gap to jack to gap to bowl and bowl and another half of a bowl, that's a big target for Kelsey Cottrell. I'd expect her to go decent weight here. Jack in the ditch would would be nearly curtains for this game. Yep. Jack in the ditch, anywhere under the number, would be very hard for South Africa to get out of. But she might be four down and run the risk if she misses. South Africa will be drawing for five. Because at the moment, Baz, Australia would see this opportunity, cut the count down, defend the lead, because you take your medicine, you cough up a one. It's not that's not the end of the world at all. South Africa need way more than singles. <laughs> yeah, and there's another element to this also here, Val, especially with the respot. So, you know, we go back 20 or 30 years ago, there was no respot. You just hit this. And you kill the end and you start again. But we know here, if Kelsey goes really big at this and kills the end, well, the jack will go back onto the tee and South Africa will still hold at least three. Yeah, all about weight control. So I don't think Kelsey goes too big. She doesn't want to kill it. I think it's going to be more so solid weight. If she's on the tight side, she removes a couple of Australian uh, South African bowls out. But for me, it's just going to be a nice, solid swinging shot here. I like backhand personally because if you're high, you get two out. And if you're under, you can take one out. Forehand. Well, let's see. I can't quite see which hand it is from here. We'll soon find out. I think it's forehand. She has gone pretty big at this. No. No, it is backhand. Taking one out. So I did like backhand because the use you can use the, the wing bowl there to kick off and get the jack. So... Massive opportunity here for South Africa. Annika Snyman, the two-time Commonwealth Games silver medalist. I think the indication was two. And that's that weight I spoke about, Val. That jack would have killed then. Yep. Uh, and, the, and, and, well, that's okay. Like, South Africa obviously holding three then, but 
by going really big too, the other additive is that you, you wipe a few bowls out of the head. So uh, well played by Kelsey, just missing offline. But South Africa need to cash in here. Four feet of room or three and a half feet of room to add another. Three here versus two is a massive difference. Annika Snyman. It's huge in the context of this match. Is it getting down? It is. But will it do it in time? Well, it's close. Yes, that's, that's definitely Oh, that should be in. So three, measure for four. So one, two, and three out. South Africa want another one. The difference between it being an eight-shot margin and a seven-shot margin is everything. Could this be the spark for the South Africans? Tabelo Muvango, Esme Kruger, and Annika Snyman. They score a three, and it's a multiple they so desperately need. Is it the spark? 18-10, the lead to Australia. Three ends to play. South Africa score their second multiple of the match after N7. It's taken them eight ends to get another one. In between that multiple on N7 and the one that they just scored, they'd only scored one shot, Barry Lester. Yeah, interesting to see what this jack ends up here. Well, it is going long. Is it going to stay on? Well, it's a lost jack. That's not what the South Africans were after at all, Barry. But that's okay. Move on now. Can't dwell over that. South Africa just need to respond. As we saw here, they didn't struggle to reach at all last end, the South Africans, and that will be the key to this match for them to try and keep collecting some multiples and force their way back with only a couple of ends to play. Well, this is the third loss jack that we've had in terms of either at the end being too short or losing the jack in the ditch. South Africa have won both of the previous two of those ends. Yeah, they're just stepping it out. One, two, three big steps from Esme. And uh, that would indicate they're just trying to step a metre each time. And it looks borderline down the other end. So I'm tipping this to be just short. Might be. And, and we saw something that was similar before. So could we get a, a double loss jack here, Barry? Yeah, so if it's a double loss jack, so if this is... Uh, it's just spotted, it, isn't it? The jack goes onto the tee and the South African team can dictate where they want to place the mat. It is short. So the jack will go to the tee and nobody will control where the jack goes. But South Africa can choose where to put the mat. And they're going to have a chat here. And I like it. So I don't need to go to spec savers just yet. No, nah, you're, you're on the money, Barry. Yeah, just I knew it was on, more on the shorter side there. So we're seeing the mat going right back here. So this is... Okay, one mat length off the tee, so pretty much ditch to ditch. 36 metres. So we've, we've actually uh, spoke to the green keepers the other day. So it is actually 30, 38 metre length green, minus the two each end. So it's actually, ditch to ditch is actually 34 metres. Yep. The great Stewie White on the comments. You can access live scoring via the World Bowls Championship website. You sure can, Stewie. World2023.bowls.com.au. He's one of the great operators. He's Stewie White from Moama. He's doing stuff up here at Broadbeach, and he's been working wonders. Yeah, there's uh, no paddle steamers going off in the background here like you do here at Moama. What a sound that is. So iconic. What a beautiful part of the world, Echuca, Moama. But in the background, what we do have going off is a lot of crowd down there at Green 1. Huge crowds there, four and five deep, sitting, standing, and right in behind the rinks, which is interesting because as we're trying to bring to you here from Green 3 at Club Helensvale, you'll notice there is no spectator viewing right behind the rinks. That's just to reduce any movement. Yep. But down on Green 1, we're just seeing there a lot of spectators in behind the rinks. So and and that that it is a fenced off area and it's just one of those things uh, we're trying to let the spectators 
find any place they can in behind these greens, in around these greens to get a really good view of the action. But this grandstand up here is a phenomenal setup. I've never seen anything like that since the Commonwealth Games in 2018. What a um, great infrastructure they've put together up here, Val, on green three, or right around the green. Grandstands, great viewing for all the spectators. It is. It's been so wonderful, this tournament. The men's fours, Hong Kong have just picked up a five to level things against New Zealand. Great result for them as they look to get through to a medal match, get through to the semifinals. And South Africa here with a spark of momentum. As May Kruger, forehand it is. Well, that'll do. I think that's enough for one. So a bare minimum for South Africa for me would be a two. Yeah, I agree because yep. if you look this end here, if Australia win it, it can go a long way to seeing next end be, the next end of N17 being the last one. So if Australia win this end, they'll lead it by at least nine. If South Africa win the end, they can get it to within that full count as, well, Lindsay Clark crashes in. I reckon that Jack sitting closer to the South African bowl, which will give them some hope. Yeah, needs to repeat the dose, does Esme Kruger, forehand again. If you're not getting the shot or one right near it, you're wanting to be beating the back bowl of Australia and that wing bowl out there at sort of 2.30. Ideally, try and get third shot, and then they can start to look at removing the nearest bowl of Australia. So this is coming back nicely. Is it going to get down for third? It's going to be a close finish here. If it falls in, it's probably going to be third. Not quite. So obviously other games going on. Quarter final action here. Green three at Club Helensvale. We see India. Well, they're down eight to sixteen. Canada having a great performance there. And you move next door. Well, New Zealand, Malaysia. They've played each other many times now over big, big competitions. Malaysia, very, very strong country when it comes to bowls. They're leading twelve eleven over New Zealand in the women's. Fours, sorry, triples. And we see there the next rink over. Well, England. England leading 17-12, Baz. Yeah, that's high scoring, isn't it? Yep, over Ireland. That's after 15 ends. So plenty going on on green three here at the World Bowls Championships. But on our rink, South Africa. Looking to come back, looking to try and forge on and see if they can stage an almighty comeback. Yeah, no more Asia-Pacific Games, as the World Bowls is now every two years, so that's replaced. Well, oh my God, wow, what an effort the there. The shaving of everything. Unbelievable there from... Annika Snyman. Yeah, great attempt. That Annika. was an unreal attempt. Well, it was bowl through Jack to get the Jack out the wing for three or four or three. As uh, Kelsey will be trying to draw the shot here. Is she going to make it? I don't think so. So Annika, again, bowl through Jack for a couple. Even if it spits out near the peg, they've got one just out of view there. That's the goal. We'll try and turn it off clean, but ideally through the Jack. Big bowl required here for South Africa. Must must get a multiple. Well, this is going to go under as well. But oh. will it get a little result? Wasn't far away. So a one here for South Africa. Not the end of the world. But yeah. they need they they need the multiple and I wonder if Kelsey's going to come down and look and see if they are holding. I uh, can't quite tell at this angle. Yeah, I'm looking at the marker to see which paddle she's holding. I think she's holding a red paddle in her right hand. So if it is one, I think Straya take it. Yeah, yeah. they do. Yep. Does South Africa want to measure things? Nope, they're kicking the bowls away, and that is a really smart decision from the Aussies because... There's no point trying to risk things. They lead it by nine, two ends to play. South Africa now need to score a three to take this into the last end. 
for the first time Australia win an end when there's been a lost jack. I've had three in this match, or four, I guess. Try and get some of those men's fours live scores for you here for the finals. And Scotland have come back. Cook Islands 12-6 ahead. It's 12-11 now. New Zealand and Hong Kong, China, 10 all after 10. Australia lead the USA, 13-6 after 11. And Ireland lead Wales, 11-8 after 11. Some enthralling battles going on on Green 1. Another short jack from the Aussies, but the mat is back. Almost the three-quarter length here. Australia have toiled hard this morning. South Africa were well and truly in this. And a three-end spell from N12 to 14 has broken this result open. But South Africa, a big score here, and it can be game on. Dawn Heyman just sliding past, and that's uh, going to be a good home, really, when you think that South Africa is just going to be trying to push into this jack, give their bowls a chance to try and score a number. As you mentioned, Val, if, it, if they don't get at least the three, they will shake hands. And it is still only quarter, well, 20 past 10, so it's very early still. Yeah. So it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a 12.30 start the next game, so it's a big break. You're talking uh, a couple of hours to go away and recover. Um, they'll probably try and rush down and watch the, the end of the men's game. but It could possibly be earlier if everyone is done quickly, but we never know. They're, they're all untimed matches, but 12.30 is when the next session is scheduled to start, which is two hours and 11 minutes away, but it'll probably be earlier than that. Yeah, it's an interesting one, uh, Val, if, if you were to ask the players whether they want to... Um you know, they've got the feel of the green, feel of the conditions. Come back in two hours' time. You never know. The wind could get up, you know, 20, 30 knots or you just don't know. So changes things completely, doesn't it? Yeah. So a quick um, call around to the players. Uh, what do you want to do? Management, coaches. Um, I'd be surprised if they want to, if, uh, if, if it allows, if they'd want to wait that long. I reckon they'd be pretty keen to just refuel, grab something to nibble on. Just a quick one, Barry. Esme. Yeah, lovely shot. That'll do. So that's two, I reckon. It might just be now England were up 17-12 when we gave you the last update in the women's triples against Ireland. Ireland have just notched up a four. Wow. It's 17-16 after 16. Lindsay Clark, forehand, looking to reduce the count. One needs to be in the area. Or even get the shot. Very close. Great attempt. So South Africa for me, holding one. Esme so. just needs to find to counter. I reckon two feet. So if Esme can get one in here, that's two to South Africa with obviously two more to come. So A two won't do for South Africa. I reckon she's played this pretty well. Just needs to hold on. Her weight looks good enough. That should be enough to count. So two to South Africa on the crossover. Well, they've done their job so far. Yes. Sabello Muvango and Esme Kruger. They want to send it to a final end. Now, Australia, they drop a three. South Africa will need a full count to send it to an extra end. If Australia drop a two, a one, or score in this end, the match is over with an end to play. New Zealand and Malaysia, 12 apiece. Canada lead India, 16-9. England lead Ireland, 17-16. Australia or South Africa to meet the winner... Of England or Ireland, Kelsey is going to drop underneath. So an opportunity here. Well, high fiving. Oh, I, I think Kelsey's happy. Well, they're happy because I think Kelsey may have snuck in for second. But now the degree of difficulty is very, very high here, Val. But I think South Africa need to try and play it. Come down on the back end. As you can see, the jack is slightly exposed there to us. Come down, just try and trail the jack into the shop bowl and kick it out to 9 o'clock and make four. Yeah. 
If not, backhand, look to arrive, sit the last bowl of Kelsey Cottrell's, make three. I think, uh, but just need to be super weight critical because the key to this shot is, as they're chasing a number, if you don't get any of those options and you're overplaying it, you won't stay around the head. So we'll see here. Backhand it is. Looking to sit this shot bowl or this, the nearest bowl of Australia. Or work back down and halve this jack. Not far away here. Annika Snyman. Can she kick it? She can. What a shot. That is three, maybe four. Enough. What a shot from Annika Snyman. Well, she ran through and probably ran out, but... Gee, a little bit more of that jack. She ended up getting a fair bit of it and kicked forward as opposed to sideways. But this is exactly what you call, Barry, and that's <laughs> unbelievably executed from the South African skip. Now, Kelsey... See how lonely that bowl is now, mm-hmm. Val. So Kelsey's got to get within a yard just to cut all this down now. So Kelsey Cottrell, she's looking to get something close. Anything within a yard will help. She's going to make it. She's trying... Well, they're, yeah, well, that, they're happy. I think that's second. They it, are happy with it. It's the same thing here now. Annika, she can try and trail the jack to the bowl just under the blue, uh, jack there. Trail it to that blue bowl. She can make four on her forehand. Annika Snyman. This is a big end and a big bowl. Because it's their tournament. But look at the class of these yeah. players. You know, Kelsey just doing what she needed to do there. Annika, and, uh, you know, playing that beautiful shot. You know, I felt like I was in a computer game then. Just to be able to draw that shot up and for her to play it. What an amazing shot. As much as um, now Australia may be having shot or second shot, hats off to, uh, to play that shot and have the ability to do it. So, Annika Snyman to keep South Africa in the tournament. We need jack movement here to keep this game alive. Jack down the line, 18 inches. She isn't a world away. She is not a world away, Annika Snyman. And that is going to do the job. Two great shots, Annika. Well done for her country, keeping this game alive. If you're a South African supporter right now, you'd be super proud of that effort. Down championship down, putting the bowls in the bag and heading inside. But all of a sudden, a measure to stay alive. Anything extra could be vital. I reckon they've kicked the three out already, Barry. Oh, they're just for me, Val. Like that, that is massive from Annika Snyman. Two perfectly executed bowls, absolutely clutch. And she keeps South Africa alive, we think. They are measuring. Well, it's definitely three, so the game's alive. Yep. So, at this stage, on a live score, we think it's a three. It could be a fourth. A fourth means a full count for South Africa in the final end will win it. A five will send it to an extra end. If it is a three, only a full count sends it to an extra end. So, Australia's still in the prime position, but South Africa to keep things going. Amazing. And already, um, I'm just putting myself in the position as a lead, already you're thinking, well, we need to have a chat straight away, talk about the length, and the key to chasing a number now is the jack three three to South Africa. So the situation as we head to the final end, South Africa, Barry Lester, need a full count to send it to an extra end. Yeah, and, and South Africa can't put the jack near the tee. They must have a chat here. It's got to be short to yeah. give them every chance. So Tabela Muvango. Puts the mat down close-ish to the tee, close to the back of the rink. And these are the little, well, they're not little decisions, Val. They're massive decisions. But sometimes we can float our way throughout a game, just throw a jack and just hope that we play well. But this is very strategic here. This jack can't afford to be near the tee. It's going pretty long. Well, it's going. That is that is on the tee. Well, now it's going to be very, very tough. They've got to fit six bowls. Somewhere between the jack and the ditch. Whereas if the jack was well and truly up the green, you've got all that room behind the jack to put the bowl. So let's see how we go. It's always a, a big one. Two two things. 
if you if you're looking to keep your bowls on the green and score a number, jack up the green. And if you're looking to kill an end and stay in live in a game, you want to jack up the green because the nearer the jack, nearer the target. It's a bell easy to kill. Any Good touch of the jack is a perfect... Well, what a great shot backing up that jack roll. Great start for Tabello Muvango. Dawn Heyman now can almost put it to bed with her first bowl. Triples. Annika Snyman. Absolutely brilliant to send this match into the final end. Dawn Heyman, that... Would almost do the job, Barry Lester. Almost. Good choice. Good choice of words there. So this bowl just has to be on the green. Obviously trying to chase that six. So this bowl just needs to be even draw to the tee. Um, just put something around it. If you back yourself to be there, well, trail the jack in the ditch makes two or sit on your own. Full count needed for South Africa. And that has gone into the ditch. So, well, it's a foregone conclusion now. Australia are home. Tabella Muvango going too fast, too quick. And Australia will have the job done. Kelsey and Dawn Heyman puts in another beauty. So they are shaking hands. I'll declare this end. It doesn't really matter what happens because there is a bowl in the ditch. So they're picking them all up. And that bowl in the ditch from Tabello Muvango, enough to say, for, or enough for Australia to say thank you very much. We'll move through to the semi finals and we're going to take on either Ireland or England. Barry Lester, Dawn Heyman, Lindsay Clark, and Kelsey Cottrell, they get themselves a medal, but what a performance it was from Tabella Muvango, Esme Kruger, and Annika Snyman to get themselves through to the quarterfinals. And they played so well for, you know, it was just that little three, three end spell from 12 to 14 where the Aussies scored nine shots. Yeah, you remove the surplus out of there, so you, you, you turn those into singles. Well, South Africa would have been pretty much level pegging, but. You said it well, Val. I really enjoyed that match. The fact that South Africa just fought hard all, all the way to the end. A very proud country when it comes to their bowls. Great players, as we saw, shots play, trailing, drawing, and uh, the experience of those great players from South Africa. Great battles had over many years, and none better than what we just witnessed. Well done to Australia. Two big games to go. The dream's alive for Lindsay to try and pick up that gold as she looks to retire in a couple of days' time. But well done, South Africa. Took it all the way to the Aussies. Be very proud of your tournament and how you played. Unfortunately, as we say, Val, there had to be a winner, but all six players can hold their head high. They really can. It was a great contest. Shots play and shots galore. And Australia, Dawn Heyman, Lindsay Clark and Kelsey Cottrell, they are through. And we might bring you the final end of this Ireland-England contest. England lead at 18-16 with an end to play. And I reckon we're going to bring you this to see who plays Australia in the semi-final. Why not? We've only got the coverage on the 45 cameras, so we're not going to have anything behind the head or anything too strenuous. But England leading. They've led the entire match. Ireland with a big four on the third last end. To get within one, England have taken the penultimate end with a single. So Ireland will have last bowl, a two, send it to an extra end. Ireland can score a three. They can get through. They advanced in a final end thriller over Hong Kong, China yesterday. All they had to do was lose by less than three or win against Hong Kong. They were down by six at one stage, and they got through and won the match. England, Jamie Lee Marshall, Lorraine Culler, and Catherine Rednall. Ireland's contingent. Well, Sophie McIntyre, Shauna O'Neill, and Chloe Wilson. England in the red, Ireland in the blue.
Canada. They are through to the semi-finals. They've knocked off India. Emma Boyd, Bailey Van Stein. They are through. Joanna Cooper, the other one in that team. But this one here. So New Zealand and Malaysia also locked in a tight battle after 16 12 all, or 13 12 in favour of the Blackjacks over Malaysia. And Ireland. Not a bad effort. Ireland still holding one. Yeah, no one really leaving this venue, even though the Aussies have just picked up a win there, Val. Uh, seeing a lot of people <laughs> staying around. They see some uh, some big games going on here. You see New Zealand and Malaysia, one in it. <laughs> Canada picking up a win there. They're hugging and yep. celebrating. So they get a medal, Canada. Uh, well, there you go. And that's what it's all about too. That, you know, that... That win already, knowing you've got a medal, it's a good feeling. You're going to be up on the dais. So Baz, whether, you, whether they're singing a song yet, they don't know, but they know they're guaranteed to get up there come presentations. They would certainly like to. Now, Barry Lester, Sophie Tolchard and Amy Farrow against Sarah Nichols and Issy White. Well, 14 all, extra end. Oh, well, I took a glance at that about half an hour ago, and I think England were up by nearly 10, so... That's a, a big comeback. So Ireland holding two. Lorraine Cooler. What has she got? She's a big shot. She's out. taken one out. She'll take it. A one to Ireland won't do. They need two to send it to an extra end. We may just get one here too. Imagine being an English fan right now. Yeah, I've just refreshed my screen. It was 10-3 when I last looked, so now 14 all. And as you said, was it an extra end, Val? Yes. Wow, an extra end over 18 ends. I think and it was 11. An extra. 11 2, I think it was, in favour of Tolchard and Pharaoh. So the skips will make their way down. It's Catherine Rednault that will go first. Bronze medalist in the women's singles, falling in an epic to Kelly McCarrahan. So the winner of this to take on Australia Dawn Heyman, Lindsay Clark, and Kelsey Cottrell already through. So that uh, that game, other game going on over at Musgrave, Tolchard, Farrow versus Nichols and White. We'll keep you up to date with that one as well, even though you can tune in live yourself if you choose to. But here we are at Green 3 at Club Allensville as the sun really starts to yep. do its work. Mm, that is nice. A lot of people, as we look around, reaching for the sunscreen. And uh, this game here, well... So we have two... Semi-finalists sorted in the top half. One in the top half, one in the bottom half. As Locke has got us some picture-in-picture picture here. This is some exquisite work from Lachlan Williams behind the scenes. So, time for Ireland to pop one in. Chloe Wilson, I believe, the yeah. skip. Yeah, shaping up on the forehand. Oh, great work, Lockie. That's awesome, mate. Well done. That is brilliant. You see the bowl leave one screen <laughs> and enter another. Well done. They're interested. They like it. And that is enough for two. So if Catherine Rednall cannot do anything about this, it's very close, but they like it. Yeah, we can't see from here, Val, but interesting to see whether that last bowl does create an angle to get both bowls out now. Catherine, she's looking down the rink from the front as you see both players walking up to meet her. They're just standing at the front of the head. All three players contributing here, all trying to back each other in with this call. So we'll obviously cover the extra end if it does go to it. Currently, Ireland holding an extra end. If Catherine Rednall cannot do anything about this, Ireland could have a bowl to send themselves through to play Australia. In the semi-finals, they're in the same section, Australia and Ireland. The weight it is, Catherine Rednall on the forehand, looking for any contact here. She's interested. She likes it. 
Oh, what has she done? You wouldn't believe it. Her face is in her palm. You absolutely wouldn't believe it. From two down to contacting the bowl she needed to back cutting it onto Jack. And it's given Ireland still two shots. Two. So we're going at, at this stage. It's an extra end. Chloe Wilson, been to, living out here in Australia for quite some time now. It's quite a few months with her with her boyfriend, Adam McKeon. Kewan and down there at South Wee. Look at that. Look at that. I Little, love this. How good is that? Just you've, saying, you've got this. You can do it. That's it. Reset. Go back to the mat. Focus on your line. She's taking her time. Head down. Taking some breaths. Val Smith has just done something sensational yeah, for she, New Zealand. She was down down a couple, Val Smith, drawn within a foot. I thought they were talking to me. Okay. So, Chloe Wilson, this is just huge. She's got a little, yeah, a little rub of the hands together. I love that. What a moment. What a moment in her career. So, it'll be forehand, I believe. But just because she just played one on the forehand, it may be slightly easier backhand because if she trails the jack, keeps the, the, th the thought of a three alive. So, it is backhand. Chloe Wilson for Ireland. This to win the game. They were down by about 10, Barry Lester. And we gave them an update. Are they interested? Well, the weight it's looks all right. Coming, they're telling it to get down. They love it. She's and Ireland. The... Ireland, Chloe Wilson almost in tears. A Houdini act of epic proportions. Heartbreak for England. But the Irish will go through to face Australia. In the semi final, Sophie McIntyre, Shauna O'Neill, and Chloe Wilson. Wow. And Malaysia celebrate as well. What is going on on Green 3 here at Club Helens Vale? Lots of celebrating. What a morning. One but down to one up, Malaysia. So there. <laughs> Ireland in tears. But we, I think we have to cover this too. We're going to, Locke's going to run and get the 45 sorted for us. So we're going to cover what's happening between Malaysia and New Zealand here as well. What an unbelievable match. It's 13 all after 17. So Malaysia and New Zealand are tied. They're going into their final end. Ireland have staged one of the more remarkable comebacks to knock England out. And the differences of emotions... On the bank, the English trio, Jamie Lee Marshall, Kat, uh, Lorraine Culler and Catherine Rednall absolutely gutted. The elation from the Irish, wow, what a performance. Barry Lester, S Chloe Wilson, that is a splendid way to finish. Yeah, Chloe Wilson, she just played one on the forehand. She had to switch to the backhand, but I just want to say how incredibly gutsy and what amazing effort was from Catherine Rednall. Stiff to get the back cut to go. Still two down. And as they pose for a photo, I think there's still some tears there from all six players. But the Irish have been building for this. They've been coming out here three times in the last 15 months. Having hit outs against Bowls Australia. They've brought out some youth. They've got a lot of support from the Irish Sports Foundation. And they've got some sports science people out here with them. They're really trying to really go up with their program. And they're getting some reward, as we saw. The men's pairs winning gold. And now another medal to Ireland in a team event as the men's triples picked up bronze. So Ireland, they've put in the hard yards and they're getting some reward, Val. They have. And they've come out here a couple of times, Ireland. They have had a, a sensational World Bowls Championships. Malaysia and New Zealand. It's been tit for tat the entire contest. They've been close. And it's Nurul Alyani Jamil, Siafika Haida Rahman, and Azlina Ashad up against Leanne Polson. Catch yourself Bruce, uh, under and these Val circumstances Smith. and uh, come through. There's no better the feeling. End between England and Kick Wales it for goal, the siren sounded. Yep. Yeah. It's all down to Izzy here. Drama all across the Gold Coast. Good breath. Yeah, England currently holding Has a very there. confident. Well, uh, Scotland have Be moved confident the with the Islands. shot you're going Barry to play. 13, they Think about your process, not about the result. Hong Kong, China, 12, 10 up over New Zealand. Oh, she's gone, she's she's gone for the, the, she's gone for the, for the doctor. Oh, 11, unlucky. 12 over Wales. Unlucky. Oh, wow. Well, 
Wow. With an Andy, Andy yeah. Climax. Yeah, I was hoping she was going to. Well, not that I was hoping she was going to do it, but it wouldn't have been a, a, a befitting end, a nice draw in two inches yeah, off the jack on, on that hand, but never belt. mind. Look, Australia, well done, girls, USA, uh, uh, to uh, Sophie Scotland, and Amy. Last time yeah, fantastic. They, uh, their next assignment will be against uh, team, uh, team Malta. So Malaysia and they'll probably the be playing uh, on this A same uh, green, but uh, over on uh, on the other rinks, the rink, probably it was be like uh, when Shane rink five, according to our, uh, our little mate, our, our uh, game. mechanical <laughs> genius, mate, Moriarty. He's, He's uh, got it all sussed, the yeah, we're a.k.a. Uh, Robbie Allen. High-powered camera. Where are we heading? Uh, oh, okay. There, Wilson, down we'll on just finish horses, off with the... Uh, before we come back to this game here, we'll uh, we'll just acknowledge uh, the, uh, the, the sponsors of this so event. Uh, run under the auspices of World Bowls and Lewis. Bowls yes, Australia. We thank them very much they're for off to uh, a uh, allowing this event to be held on the Gold Coast. Uh, sunny Gold Coast with a bit of cloud and their major sponsors. Tourism and Events Queensland, major events Gold Coast, Australia Sports Commission, the Australian Institute of Sport, the Commonwealth Games Australia, right at home, Apia, Audica, Henselite, Drinkwise, Geeks to You and Mac Max. We thank them very much for their uh, sponsorship of this event, assisting us to get off the ground. So, uh, yeah, thank you very, very much to the girls for a, a wonderful match there. For, um, and, uh, England prevailing over, uh, over Wales. So and uh, it was a good game, and uh, we, as, as Tim alluded, we were uh, we thought England were going to run away with it one stage there, and uh, against Kelly McCarrahan but on uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, Wales fought back, and there we have a 17-14 uh, after uh, an extra end. And look, thank you very much. Uh, Tim, I know you're going to get away, so thank you very much for your uh, commentary over the last week, uh, or two weeks actually. We thank you very much. Uh, it's been uh, been great to have you down here, and uh, we shall catch up. But uh, to uh, everyone out there, uh, we would like. Oh, what happened there with the New Zealand bowl? Is it? Oh eight, Christchurch. Yeah. Oh well. Them's, them's apples. So uh, thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you enjoy your bowls and support your club, and bye for now. So, this has been this has been a massive day. What a what a bunch of semi-finals we've had. Hopefully we've. Hopefully we fixed the audio little audio problem that we had, Baz. But at the moment, Malaysia holding three with Val, with Taylor Bruce. What a shot here, Taylor Bruce. Needing to get in. Has she done enough? Searching for two gold medals at the World Champs. Taylor Bruce said, this is how it's done. At such a young age, 28 years of age. Taylor Bruce, what a great story, story we read recently. 13, 12, 13 years of age, meeting Kelsey Cottrell at the 20, 2008 World Champs over there at Christchurch, meeting some of her favourite players and heroes in the game, and now she's out there playing as a hero for her country. She is. Now, Val Smith, her teammate, as I just said, won singles and pairs in 08. She wants another gold medal to add to that collection. Malaysia, however, want to spoil the party. It's close. That has done the job, apparently. Val Smith barking more instructions to Taylor Bruce. She will, of course, have last bowl. Okay, so it's very, very quiet around the surrounds now. Taylor Bruce. This, of course, being bonus coverage. Can she find a foot to 18 inches more weight? Even if she's heavy here, can she just change the shape of this head? Val Smith. She's asking for it to hang and change this head up. Well, that's not all bad. It's not. 
if if anything was to change, that's probably not a bad result for New Zealand. It gives, I was about to say Smithy, that's her nickname, of course, but it gives Val a bit more of an open look at this head now as opposed to trying to negate something. What an effort, Taylor Bruce. But Malaysia currently, well, they're holding... What do you think that is from their value? Two, you reckon? Uh, I think it's a it's couple. tough to see. Yeah, it is. We, we are, of course, this is bonus coverage, so that's why we don't have the cameras right behind the head. Uh, so we've already covered Australia beating South Africa. We've already covered Ireland staging a Houdini comeback of epic proportions to defeat New Zealand by... Uh, to de- defeat England by one. Malaysia secured a sensational d- uh, score on the last end to send this one into a final end shootout. In 18 of 18, scores are levelled. Whoever wins this end wins the match. So it's a one-end shootout for the title or for, for a semi-final spot against Canada. Australia play Ireland later on this afternoon. Canada are through. They beat India. The winner of this takes on the Maple Leaf. Okay. Val Smith, there is, it is dead silent here at green three on the backhand. Not much room. Let's watch the body language. It's definitely there. Needs contact now. She's high. So it's going to come to the last bowl. Both will come down to the head and inspect. What a drama-filled morning. So Val Smith's actually turned another bowl in there. I don't think it's re- changed the shot or restricted any more room. If anything, might have given her something to sit on. But as this currently sits, Val Smith will have the last bowl to draw within a foot of the jack to try and go through to the semifinals. And there isn't a noise here. I'm actually commentating without my headphones on just so I can see what kind of sounds are out here on Green 3. And there isn't any sound at all. Just a couple of birds chirping in the background. Dead silence here as Malaysia. What do they do? Do they try and get another one closer? Or do they cover the danger out the back? So this is... The final bowl for Malaysia. This is a semi-final spot up for grabs. They're currently holding sway. Their final bowl, their job will be done after this. It'll be up to Val Smith to send New Zealand into the semis. Malaysia were down with an end to play. And she has gone around the back, Barry Lester. Well, from one Val to another, I'm going to let you call this one, mate. (laughs) Very nice by you, Barry. Except her name is Valerie. What a song. (laughs) Here we go. Val Smith, Leanne Paulson and Taylor Bruce consult. Leanne and Val, bronze in the women's fours. They scored that over the weekend. Taylor Bruce, gold in the women's singles. All three of them want to go home with a second medal. The 58-year-old. Four-time Commonwealth medalist. Two-time world champion. She's done so much in her career, Val Smith. Experience means everything in these situations. She's been here before. Weight it is. On her haunches. Val Smith. Not far away. Not far away. She's done it. Or has she? Or has she? They celebrated, but the jack kept moving. Taylor Bruce was up. Malaysia, a brief moment of despair, but maybe Malaysia might have done this. They're not sure. Can we get a replay? I think we're going to get an umpire. Well, did that Jack hit the bowl? New Zealand's body language. 
Or did the the bowl stop the jack from going out? I don't know. I think it's it. They're checking to see whether it's in bounds or not. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, yeah. it was the jack Maybe. hitting out of bounds and that bowl that was dead stop it from going out? Maybe. Because that's a. So if that bowl is not a toucher and the jack was heading into the ditch and then hit a dead bowl that was sitting in the ditch. It's out of bounds, I think. I believe they, they've called it out of bounds. So the jack goes to the tee. And are we getting a measure? From a boundary measure to a actual standard measure for the game, this it doesn't get any. So they're having a chat. They're celebrating New, New Zealand. New Zealand have done it. Val Smith. It was a bit premature, but the decision is final. And Val Smith with the final bowl scores a one with an absolute bomb. And from one Val to another... Congratulations to New Zealand. Absolutely magnificent. I'll what a drama-filled morning. Australia and Canada get through comfortably. Ireland with a last gasp effort in a comeback over England. And New Zealand win an almighty clash against Malaysia to move through to the semi-finals. They'll take on Canada. Australia will take on Ireland this afternoon. Baz, what a morning we've had. How good is Lawn Bowls? You must share this footage on your page. Tell people how good this game is. You just witnessed pressure personified by Valerie Smith. There for her country. Represented her country over 500 times has Val Smith. And that is one of the best bowls she's ever played in her career. She did it when the game was on the line. Tell your friends to watch that footage. Share this footage to your friends. Get them out there playing bowls because this is what it's all about. It is. We'll be back in, well, we think we'll like the Bowls Australia Facebook page and turn your notifications on. That's when you know we'll go live. But we think it's going to be in around about an hour and a half's time. We're not too sure. It just depends on when other matches finish. But Val Febo and Barry Lester have been with you for an epic semi-final morning, or a quarter-final morning of women's triples. Australia to take on Ireland in the semis. New Zealand to take on Canada. What a morning that was. We'll be back in uh, an hour and a half's time. If not, like the page, put your notifications on, and you'll know if we go early. We'll catch you soon.